through his hand is on the throttle of the Big Orange Special. And out on the west side of L.A. is a big fella named Cook throwing darts at a bigger fella they call J.J. What a pair they make and what fun they create in a place called Arroyo Seco. presents the Tennessee Volunteers and the UCLA Bruins from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Hello again, everybody. Keith Jackson along with Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan on the field. An attractive season opener for the SEC in Pac-10 matchup. Bob, the Tennessee Volunteers come in here with a new kind of an offensive tool, a running game they hope can dominate. Well, when you lose the legend of Knoxville, Heath Schuler, you try to go with your strength. And the strength of this team is their offensive line, all five linemen return, and their running back. And I think that's good thinking, at least until the quarterback gets his feet on the ground. UCLA Bruins, on the other hand, offer up one of the remarkable athletes, I think, in college football today, J.J. Stokes, to anchor their passing game. He is going to be a pleasure to watch. UCLA defense lost 15 of their 22 players in the depth wise. The offense needs to control the ball, and they need to do it with J.J. If there are questions to be answered today, most of those will hang around the Tennessee quarterback, Gary Colquitt. First time starter, but he's a fifth year senior, and this is his 22nd appearance. The guy's been around the block. He knows this offense better than any player on that team. He looked very calm and poised during the pregame warm up. It was 20 years ago these two teams opened the season in Knoxville on ABC. It was a 17 17 tie. The sun is shining in the Rose Bowl. Very comfortable temperature. Bjorn Merton to kick it off with the blue shirt at UCLA Bruins. He was an All-American kicker as a freshman. Billy Williams, number 80, is a speed burner. And Nilo Sylvan ain't bad either. They are the return people for Tennessee. As this matchup is about ready to begin. They've played ten times. And Tennessee has the edge. They've won five. Lost three. Two times. They play on grass at the Rose Bowl, as you well know. This was the scene of the World Cup soccer final and the semifinals. So the old building has had quite a summer. High hanger as Merton drops it on about the seven-yard line to Billy Williams. The senior from Alcoa is on the move, and he can really move it. But he's hunted down and brought down at about the 27-yard line by Andy Colbert. Here comes Jerry Colquitt. He is very poised, seemingly quiet, very efficient in the warm-up, making his first collegiate start. But as Bob Greasy told you, he's been in 21 ball games. He's been around. He knows what he's doing. He's waited for it. He is the penultimate example of waiting for your opportunity. Now he has it in the palm of his hand. It is obviously a very big day in the life of this young man. On first down, he will throw going big down the middle for Williams. It is incomplete. And covering on the play is Teddy Lawrence. And Lawrence was running with him step for step. And Williams is slow to get up. And timeout is taken as he does not get up. Tennessee lost two of their wide receivers last year. And Billy Williams was one of their leading receivers. The number three guy made a lot of big plays. Came down on his right ankle, twisted his right ankle when he came down, trying to make a play on the ball. That'll be a big loss for Tennessee, their first play of the season. Last year, he had 39 catches. He was expected to be the bell cow in the wide receivers. So Tennessee comes out with a bomb. It is not what was expected. As UCLA coach Terry Donahue said this. Well, I think Tennessee will come in here, number one, and clearly try to establish a running game. Uh, I think that with the departure of Schuler, the fact that the entire offensive line at Tennessee returns and they have a core of running backs that a lot of people feel can play with anybody in the country and for anybody in the country, uh, I think they'll come in here and really try to punch our defense out. But they went for the big one on the first play. It is second down and 10 on the 27, and Williams had to leave the game. This ball is handed off to James Stewart. James Stewart is a 218-pound senior from Morristown, Tennessee, and he is on a pace 
If he gets 991 yards this year, he could become the all-time leading rusher in Tennessee history. This could be a big loss for Tennessee. As I mentioned, the starting two receivers, along with Heath Schuler, are, are gone uh, from this year's team. And Billy Williams, as you mentioned, 39 receptions, five for touchdowns, and a lot of big plays. Tennessee often used three and four wide receivers at a time. Williams got eight yards on the first carry. Holtwood looking around, takes his time, delivers the ball to Moe Phillips, the fullback who drifted in front of the linebackers and picks up a first down for the Volunteers out to the 42-yard line. Here's the rest of the lineups now. Stewart, we highlight because we think he should be. He is the big man back there. Moe Phillips is a very good receiver from that fullback position. Tight end is David Horn. Williams is out right now, and Joey Kent is the other burner at the split-in position. They've got a lot of people that can really run playing those wide receiver positions on first down. Colquitt keeps it, rolls it out, and throws it on the numbers to the receiver at midfield. And Kendrick Jones, who replaced Billy Williams, makes the catch and appears to have another first down. The offensive front by Tennessee advertised as one of the best in the country anchored for the center Bubba Miller there are 287 284 285 310 and 302 and a lot of people say this one is as good if not better than the one we saw last Sunday that came from Lincoln Nebraska Williams is back in the ball game Keith uh, that ankle will twist it's probably going to stiffen up some throughout the ball game however just inside the 48 on a first down play, the ball is given to Moe Phillips, the senior out of Nashville, and he gets a couple of three yards on the carry. And now here's Swanee. Keith, obviously Billy Williams is back in the ball game. He just got kicked a little bit in the shins. But during pregame warm-up, when you're talking about Jerry Colquitt, he didn't look like a young man that didn't have the experience. He was calm. He was steady. I think more importantly, this team is behind him, and they want him to do well. So that's why they have the confidence to go big on the first play. Keith? Thank you, Lynn. The ball is marked at the 44-yard line. It'll be second down and a uh, long six. UCLA's offside, but they get away with it. The defensive end at the top of the picture at least appeared to be offside. Benji Schuler, younger brother of Heath, making that catch. Sophomore out of Bryson City, North Carolina. The defensive alignment for UCLA, George Kays is the man in the middle, the nose guard, and he's got to generate some pressure from his position. Linebackers are pretty good, in particular, Donnie Edwards. The asterisk there indicating returning starter. Carl Greenwood is a very prominent figure in the UCLA secondary, but you saw Teddy Lawrence make a heck of a play a little while ago in the first play of the ballgame. Mose Phillips is the single back, third down and two, and Colquitt rolls it out, and penalty flags have stopped the play. Jim Springer is the referee. It's a Pac-10 crew. Good ball. False start. Offense. It's a false start penalty against Tennessee. Back him up five. Bill Fulmer's contract extended through 1998. Terry Donahue's contract already reaching through the 1998 season. Aaron Hayden checks into the backfield now for Tennessee. This guy can dart 214-pound senior out of Detroit. Holds it down the line on the option. Keeps it and turns it. And will not get the first down. They stop him at about the 39-yard line. Very good defensive flow by the backers and good support from the corners. And Tennessee now will send the kicking team in. Colquitt looks as though he's hurt, Keith. Comes up a little bit gimpy. It's either an ankle or a knee. Backing him up is Todd Helton. John He's a junior, a baseball player, but uh, Tennessee likes to punt here, but we'll check out the injury to Copeland. Tom Hutton hits it very high. His average is not so terribly long, but uh, return against him is virtually impossible because he gets the ball so high in the air. He is a fourth-year starter, and his career average is right at 41 yards. Very, see what I mean about getting the ball up in the air? That's a tail dragger. It should go into the, oh, it takes a Tennessee bounce <laughs> and comes back to the 10-yard line, and they're able to kill it just about the 10. So a very effective punt by Hutton. <laughs> 
All right, it'll be UCLA ball. Their first possession, it will come from the 10-yard line. Tennessee getting a fortuitous bounce on the punt that looked like it would go into the end zone. Bounce right back up. And here come the blue-shirted Bruins. They'll set up at tailback will be Sharmon Shaw. The tailback core is all gimpy. Here comes Shaw breaking over the left side and gets up across the 15-yard line. Everybody seems to have a burr under their saddle. In the 1994 Rose Bowl game played here, watch Wayne Cook, number 15, the Bruin quarterback. They had time for two plays. His neck is bowed and his jaw is set and says it won't happen again. It is second down and uh, three and a half. Cook waits and waits and throws and gets his first down as the pass is completed up to the 22-yard line to Josh Ely. So Wayne Cook, the senior quarterback, 215-pounder from Newbury Park, California, settles in at quarterback with Shaw starting today at the running back. Milliner is a steady, solid guy at fullback, and of course, most everybody in the world knows the story of J.J. Stokes, the 6'4", wide out, big, big target, and a heck of an athlete. But the presence of Stokes makes life kind of fun for folks like Kevin Jordan, who is not bad either. Ball stays on the ground for the UCLA Bruins, and Shaw will pick up about five yards on the carry. The offensive front for UCLA has enough experience. In fact, number 79 is a heck of a football player. Christensen, Flanagan, Zinkson, and Kennedy. That's a solid group, and if they hold together health-wise, I think you'll see this Bruin team have a pretty good season. Ogden in particular, number 79, at six foot uh, eight, 315 pounds, He's the blind side or weak side tackle, the man who protects the quarterback. Greg Ford checks in now, a freshman at 250 pounds as a blocking back. The pass is thrown. Good for the first down. This is what J.J. Stokes will do for you. You don't know that you've got him under control until you see his body on the ground. Ben Talley is hell on wheels at that linebacker position for Tennessee. He goes in the down position in the pass rush. He's a tough guy to handle. And he's going to be the guy that Jonathan Ogden's going to have to work against today. The deep backs, Jason Parker, will be the man that's going to have to roll over and help the corner when they double J.J. Stokes. The defensive backs are very good, but they need to be because Tennessee lost all four of their starting defensive linemen from last year, those four defensive linemen told, told 22 sacks on the season. Well, it's apparently some kind of a problem. There may be a time problem, but we've got 10 minutes and 25 seconds showing on the clock remaining in the first quarter of play. The referee's microphone, either it's not patched in, or it's not hooked up, or it's not working. I don't know. But we haven't, uh, we haven't heard from uh, Jim Springer yet. And it's the 25-second clock that is apparently the problem. If it's not functioning, then they'll just keep it on the field. Here's Todd Helton. He will be the backup man if uh, Jerry Colquitt is not able to come back. He is a junior from Knoxville. But in particular, he is a baseball player. Then let's see what Swanee can tell us about Jerry Colquitt. Well, Keith, he came over to the sideline. The doctor examined him, and he started comparing both knees. He thinks that he put, tore his ligaments in his left knee, but he can't be sure. They're going to take him into the locker room so he can further examine him. But I don't think he's going to be back in the ball game. Fulmer came over, shook his hand. Todd Helton came over, told him he was sorry, and then continued to warm up to come into the ball game. Keith? Boy, Ed is a crusher, isn't it? What a tough break isn't for that uh, miserable for, for Copeland. Oh, my goodness. If that, in fact, is uh, the case. Shaw carries again, the sophomore out of Los Angeles, and he picks up another two or three yards on the play. So we'll be looking now at third down and about uh, four, as we have nine and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, and the news about Jerry Colquitt is a bummer. Certainly. You know, it is, Keith, because, you know, he he's a fifth-year senior. He was at Tennessee before Heath Schuler came, yeah, he competed with him, backed him up, and then when Heath Schuler played three years and left, this is uh, Colquitt's fifth down. year, his chance to play, and on the first uh, few plays of his senior season, has to go out with an injury that might be a serious. Might take him out for the season. Yep. 
third down and three and Darren Washington is in the backfield as they go out of the shotgun Wayne Cook's pass is completed to J.J. Stokes he turns and falls forward and by doing so picks up a first down for UCLA to the 48 yard line Stokes is 6 5 and when you said foil fell forward I think that is exactly what got the first down for UCLA because he was right on the uh, first down line he's at 223 pounds and he's strong. He's very wiry and strong. James Milliner back in now. Washington goes out. Bruins will put a pair of wideouts, Jordan and Stokes wide. Stay in the shotgun. They run a lot out of this. Little fake handoff. Let it go down the field for Jordan. Kevin's got it. Touchdown. I told you, Kevin Jordan, smiling all the way to the bank. Faith is going to be out here. The receiver is just going to go. As you mentioned earlier, Keith, it must be nice playing on the opposite side of J.J. Stokes. The kick by Merton. He missed it. His first extra point try of 1994 with the All-American kicker from a year ago, and he shanks it. A duck hook. So it's six to nothing, UCLA. Todd Helton has never started a football game for the Tennessee Volunteers, but he's now got to step into the gap as Jerry Colquitt has gone down, possibly with a knee injury that will render him to the locker room for the rest of the day. And maybe for a lot longer. Helton's career, he's five out of nine, 78 yards and two touchdowns. That's all of the experience he's had. Meantime, Bjorn Merton, who missed three extra points a year ago, duck hooks this one, and uh, now he will kick it off. Merton had uh, won the place kicking job a year ago in a duel with Jason Leslie, who transferred to Colorado and is waiting to play over there. This will go out of bounds and bring out a penalty flag and Tennessee will get good field position on the possession after UCLA goes for the touchdown on a 51 yard touchdown pass to lead six to nothing and college football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day genuine Chevrolet Budweiser Beachwood age for crisp clean classic taste State Farm Insurance like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Tostitos brand restaurant style tortilla chips. So here is Todd Helton from Knoxville, a junior. In at quarterback. Penalty flags are flying as Helton goes to the air on the very first play. And Billy Williams, who suffered a, a jammed knee, on the opening play of the ball game is back hale and hearty and with plenty of speed and is down to about the 25 yard line but it's coming back the penalty is against Tennessee everything's going against Tennessee at this point they've got two of their stars hurt take a look at the touchdown from behind the UCLA quarterback now watch as Cook's gonna look to the left see look to the left he's uh, looking to JJ Stokes then he comes back to the other side to Jordan who split the two defensive backs and went in for the touchdown a little double coverage on both wide receivers but looked off the safety that was doubling on Jordan and got over his head Jordan is the faster of the two wideouts as we noted a moment ago and you give him a step and he's a hard guy to hunt down yes he is so the pass play and a big run by Billy Williams is wiped out by the penalty and it comes back to about a, the 35. It'll be a tough start, Keith. Now Markoff. Five. Got a tough start for Phil Fulmer and his volunteers. First, Billy Williams almost uh, is out for the game, but came back uh, with an ankle injury. Then he loses Colquitt. And now uh, a big play is called back because of a penalty. It's tough to get started, uh, 1994, Seems for like it. Fulmer. <laughs> First down and 15 with Aaron Hayden in the backfield. And Hayden has the ball, gets 
to about the 31 pick up one yard on the play and Rod Smalley playing the inside uh, linebacker position brought him down. Tennessee's quarterback recruiting. Uh, well, you can take Colquitt off the list right now, but brought, here are the people behind him. Brought four quarterbacks out. Helton, Second an outstanding player. But if anything happens to Helton, the two true freshmen who are on the sideline now, right there, Peyton Manning on the right and Brendan Stewart on the left, those two guys now have got to be a little bit more nervous than they were coming into this game. Todd Helton throwing on the run misses a Billy Williams he had him between the DBs and down on one knee but he couldn't get the ball to him it would have been a first down had he caught it but he didn't and it's third down and long well of course Peyton Manning we heard a lot about him last year when we were down in Oxford Mississippi and that's because his daddy is Archie Manning who was such a great All-American down there and a Hall of Famer so Archie here yesterday he is here but uh, you kind of wonder how much either of those two freshman quarterbacks know about the offense. I'm sure that Colquitt and Helton got most of the snaps coming into the start of the season. Not sure that Stewart is not ahead of Manning right now, though, in the development process. That ball is going to sail and uh, float out of bounds. It had a little too much air under it, didn't have enough spin on it, and it just kind of floated away from the receiver and went beyond his grasp on the sideline. So they'll have to punt. Here's more news about Jerry Colquitt now from Lynn Swan. Yes, Keith, I talked to Dr. Yeomans inside. He says he's definitely torn his anterior cruciate ligament. Oh. He was lying on the yeah. table. His father was here, came in, and Colquitt was in tears, lying on the bench in the training room, but he is definitely out for the season. That is just heartbreaking. What a really tough is. loss. Tom Hutton is in the punt, gets a good one. High hangers going down to Paul Guidry for a fair catch at about the 23-24 yard line. On the punt, 45 yards with no return. Wayne Cook steps in with James Milner. A single back back there with him as UCLA goes to a four wide out alignment and run the ball. So there's a pickup of a couple of yards on the play by Milner. Let's go back and take a look one more time at the injury to Jerry Coke with it's a little option. Third down option. He's going to slow up right here and just get bent back over that left leg. And that is a tough break personally and for the University of Tennessee. I hate to see that. Kid waits around, gets his opportunity. Second down and eight. And Cook throws a bad pass. He's throwing to, to uh, Kevin Jordan across the way, and he wasn't anywhere near giving Jordan a chance to catch the ball, but it did not look as if the uh, play was in its proper form. Something had already broken down in it. Colquitt, before he left the game, had completed three out of four passes for 23 yards and picked up a couple of first downs. So Darren Washington checks into the backfield now for UCLA as they again go to four wideouts at 640 to play in the first quarter leading six to nothing over Tennessee. Here's the pass drilled to Jordan and it's a first down at the 40 yard line. Cook took a good shot just as he released that football. But you know, Keith, with these two wide receivers of UCLA, the fun's just beginning once they catch the ball because they can run with it after they catch it. Here's White, 64, really putting the quarterback down, but these two wide receivers can run with the football after they catch it. Cook muscled up some, too, in the weight room, so he's a tougher guy this year than he was last year. And James Milliner on that carry will have a couple of yards. Jordan in the ball game has caught two balls now for 66 yards. Stokes has caught two balls for 15 yards. But remind you yourself that the Tennessee defense is preconditioned to the presence of J.J. Stokes. That, his name's been hammered at him all month. Cook's pass. That's Stokes. That's what he can do to you. Big target. Great moves, great strength. First down, 42-yard line of Tennessee. Here's a look at some of the records that Stokes holds at UCLA. Receptions in the game, 14 on the season. going to play. It's better than 14 yards. 
That's big. This is Washington. Whoa. He almost got around the corner. If Scott Gallion doesn't get him by the ankle as he goes by, he might still be running. This UCLA offense, Keith, is, a, is a, a, like a finesse offense. They use a lot of three wide receivers, a lot of draw plays. Before the Wisconsin game last year, the Rose Bowl, they had run 70 draws the last five games. They like the misdirection. They like to open it up, throw the ball, and they like to, to draw play. They do a lot of things out of this shotgun alignment. Run the ball a lot. Like that. Pass. Well, it was going to be a pass, yep. maybe. Yes, it was. But Sharmon uh, Shaw couldn't find anybody, uh, couldn't get a handle on the ball, and decided just to sit down with it. It was probably the right Charmon thing to do. Shaw. He did a nice job, Shaw did, because the receiver was covered. It was a one-man uh, route. The flanker was downfield, double covered. He just didn't throw it. They've got a guy named Skip Hicks who just foaming at the mouth to play and may very well be their best running back. He'll be back in a couple of weeks. We're almost sure. So they're just going to add to the weapons in that offensive backfield. Cook will throw this time. Pressure coming. Sets it up for a screen. Penalty flag is on the field as Darren Washington looks for blocking help and is taken down after about a two-yard pickup. So with four minutes and five seconds to go in the first quarter, you've got a 6 nothing UCLA lead. And this is what we will have for you next Saturday in regional coverage here on ABC Sports starting at 3.30 Eastern or 12.30 Pacific time. The penalty flag will go against the Bruins for illegal procedure. Ben Talley out of Griffin, Georgia, is the defensive man conferring with the referee Jim Springer. Illegal procedure on a six-man line. is Fourth down. That often happens when you go into a four-wide-out uh, alignment. You got to have seven up there. A one-yard loss on the pass play. UCLA offensive down. coordinator Bob Toledo there on the left. Replaced Homer Smith who went back to Alabama. Yep. Showing some no huddle. Darren Shaker. Darren Shaker. We'll do the punting now for UCLA. His uh, career average better than 41 yards per kick. Here's the first kick for real of 1994. It's a pooch kick trying to hit it in the corner. And he got it. Or did he get it? Yes. Where do you mark it? Five yard line. That's what he wanted. That's what he got. They used to call it the coffin <laughs> corner. <laughs> Back when Greasy was kicking. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Tennessee down in the ball game by a score of six to nothing, having lost their starting quarterback to a knee injury, Jerry Colbert, anterior cruciate ligament. That means a season probably is gone, and maybe a career, since this is his fifth year. They're backed up and will go to work from the five with Todd Helton at quarterback. James Stewart is the deep back. He gets the ball. He's across the 10 yard line. Hard runners. Stewart in particular is a tough guy. He'll drop his shoulder and run right into that DB. He won't give up to it. James Stewart. The, the story now, Keith, especially with this group that's on the field, Tennessee offensively has really got to try and get the running game going behind that offensive line with the uh, with the second string quarterback Helton in there. UCLA defensively stopped the run. And they'll take their chances with Helton trying to throw the football. Stewart picked up seven yards. He has passed Beatty Feathers in all-time Tennessee rushing history. The gain is across the 25 and up to about the 28-yard line before he is finally wrestled down. Now, this is what Terry Donahue and his coaching staff expected Tennessee to try to do. There's more pressure on them to do that now with their starting uh, quarterback and their team leader, Colquitt, uh, out of the ballgame. And there are probably a couple of freshmen on the sidelines with very wet homes. <laughs> yeah, you got that right. They're, they're going back and going over their uh, uh, game plan and seeing what plays they know. Stewart has picked up 8, 7, and 17 yards on his first three carries and just added some more to it. Six more. So he's inching up the career ladder in Tennessee football history, which is a glorious history. 
Johnny Jones holds the all-time rushing record at Tennessee with 2,852. And if James Stewart totals 991 this year, he would become the all-time leading rusher. 91 yards today will take him past the great Stanley Morgan. Got it again. Trouble in the backfield. Shakes him off. Still working at it. And turns back inside perhaps a little too soon. If he could have gotten away to the outside, he might have picked up something. And we pick up a lot of ground right here as we join John Saunders. Keith, thanks a lot. Penn State against Minnesota at their own 20. Kajana Carter takes off and is barely touched. 80 yards he runs for this touchdown. His second of the day, the other one from inside the five, 14-0. Penn State has the lead. Keith. Back here at the Rose Bowl, Helton throws, Kent catches, and the Bruins jump all over him. Carl Greenwood with his first tackle of the ball game. It's a quick screen right out here to Kent, number 11, but Greenwood has been around for five years. He's seen this before and makes a nice play. He's a four-year starter for the Bruins. Ken, incidentally, last year had 10 catches. He's a sophomore and five touchdowns. Now they go to the punt. Tom Hutton. Not quite as high this time. Paul Guidry will try it, but nothing doing. The volunteers come down and cover him like a blanket, and there is no return. It is a 42-yard punt. Penn State jumping out, as you saw in the ball game against Minnesota, will be playing the Southern California Trojans, who were a 24-17 win over Washington today. Washington today, and we'll have that game for some of you next week from Beaver Stadium at State College. Minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Six to nothing, UCLA leads Tennessee. The Bruins will go to work from their own 27-yard line. And the big story of the day and the big story of the month for the Volunteers is the loss of Jerry Knee. Shaw and Milliner line up now out of the I formation behind Cook. Give it to the up man Milliner, and he just hunkers down right in behind Flanagan and Sinkson and Christensen. And they wedge Milliner. it out for about five yards. UCLA, of course, the defending champions in the Pac-10, losing in the Rose Bowl to the Wisconsin Badgers. A five-yard game. Second down and five. Pac-10 having so far in the opening weekend a goodly bit of success in the intersectional competition. Big upset, of course, Washington State beating Illinois in Chicago Thursday night. That pass is low. And did he catch it? No. Bounced off the ground. J.J. Stokes trying to fingertip it off the turf wasn't high enough and he just could not retrieve it and so a reception is lost Stokes is going to go down and break to our left or the inside of the field and he's got the man beat that's Davis number one the ball is just not out far enough that hadn't hit the ground yet he may have caught that ball I didn't see it hit the ground well, the fellow wearing the striped shirt did. He had a good look at it, too, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> he was a little closer than I was. <laughs> On third down and five, Cook throws the sideline route. Kevin Jordan is over there. That catch is good, and it's a Bruin first down. Out just past the 40-yard line. So Deron Jenkins uh, trying to cover Kevin Jordan and had to give him some cushion because of Jordan's size and quickness, and Jordan just whipped him on the sidelines. Alan Swan. Keith, before the game, I talked to Larry Marmy, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, and, and he talked great about Jordan and about Stokes, but he said his biggest fear is not when Stokes catches the ball, is what he does afterwards. He's afraid his size and strength will just run through that secondary. His feet's pretty good, I'll tell you that. He does have good feet. Cook wanted to go deep. Couldn't find anybody, and now he hook slides for two yards. He was winding up and wanted to pump it deep, but this time Tennessee in man coverage had Jordan and Stokes under control. It was a good choice by Cook, not only not to throw the ball, but also to slide when he got down to the end of his run. Take a look at the coverage. That's Austin, 28. He's deep. 
Now he's got about six or seven inches on Austin. He could have thrown that ball up and uh, J.J. would have protected him and went up for it, but he made a nice choice. Second down and eight. Got to get rid of it. He does, and he hooks up with Stokes again, and it's inside the Tennessee 40 to the 37-yard line. And the first quarter is over. UCLA on the move again. They lead Tennessee 6 to nothing. UCLA came out in four wide receivers. Here's two on this side and two over here. This is Stokes. Now watch as he's going to go down the field. And as the, as the quarterback rolls out, the ball is going to be thrown to Stokes right here. If you want to try and get away from double coverage, go four wide receivers to send Stokes down the field. He finds an open area, and that's a good throw by Cook. UCLA ball, first down at the Tennessee 37-yard line. They split the backs this time. Shaw goes on the shift to the deep position, and the up man, Millerton, gets it. Just hangs into the middle, and the Bruin offensive front making some room for him. Flanagan sinks in Christensen. So look at the first quarter numbers. UCLA with a few more uh, plays and a few more first downs. No turnovers. Time of possession about the same. A little bit in favor of UCLA. Stokes has caught four balls. Jordan's caught three. Every catch is involved the first down, and obviously the touchdown was scored. Jordan on that 51-yard play. Second down and five. Cook making and keeping turns up field and dives for the marker. He's a yard short. So I would imagine. Uh, that causes the UCLA coaching staff to take a deep breath when they see their quarterback diving for a first down. I think Wayne Cook is, is one of the more underrated quarterbacks uh, in the Pac-10, Keith. Uh, he finished fifth in the conference Eight, last year in passing, but they've got some pretty good quarterbacks uh, in this conference out here. Rob Johnson across town at USC. There's Steve Stenstrom, uh, good one. That tree trunk is back in the ball game. Greg Ford, the freshman, 5'11", <laughs> 250 pounds at the fullback position. And Milner comes out of the tailback position in that formation, and they don't get that first down because Tennessee came popping in there, and they stopped it. So it'll bring up fourth down. Here's Lynn Swan. Keith, at the end of the quarter when J.J. Stokes caught a pass, he came off to the side and had to have his legs stretched out in the sideline. Before the game even began, on defense, summer two, Teddy Lawrence told me it was a hard summer training camp. His legs were sore. He was hoping he could get through the day without having any muscle problems. It's something we better keep an eye on throughout this ball game. Time called by Tennessee. Back with more after this word from our ABC stations. It is fourth down and a good yard for UCLA. You've got Darren Washington, number 30, and Greg Ford, 44. So they will go from the Tennessee 27-yard line. Wayne Cook sets them up and puts Washington deep. Maybe trying, a hurry. Maybe trying to pull him offside. He's checking. Oh, the poet gets pressure, gets it away, and it is incomplete. So the penalty is obviously going to go against Tennessee's Ronald Davis. He was trying to cover J.J. Stokes on a corner route, and he couldn't do it without bumping into him. And in the bumping process down the sideline, he got the flag. Well, what Cook was doing, he was checking off. He saw the bump and run at the top of the screen. Davis, number one, is 5'11", going against Stokes, who is 6'5", at six inches. But uh, Davis just didn't let him get back to the inside. 15-yard penalty in college football, which is, uh, I think, a fair call on an offensive pass interference. Fair versus a spot of the foul. Yeah. A 15-yard penalty against Tennessee. 14-yard line, just, that's unless just you're the, barely touching. That's, that's unless you're the offensive team. team and you throw about a 70-yard pass. I hunker down in the trenches with a... <laughs> Guys that play the defense. <laughs> <laughs> offensive guys that the <laughs> Ten yard line, hammering into there and grinding along is Darren Washington, a 214 pound senior from Killeen, Texas. 79, the left tackle is John Ogden. 
He's over 300 pounds. He slides to the inside, blocks Galli in the middle linebacker, and does a nice job of it. In fact, knocks him out of the picture for a while. He's played since he was a freshman here. Washington, the deep man, the up man, Miller, gets it. Fullback's getting a lot of work today, an unusual amount, actually. And UCLA now marching along inside the Tennessee 10-yard line. They lead in the ball game by a score of six to nothing, with 12-15 to go in the first half of play. Opening game for both teams. He played at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Millinaire with 16 yards on six carries now, and you get a new man into the lineup. It is Brian Adams, a flanker. And he's quick and a very good receiver. On third down and four to the corner to Stokes and he leaps and he one hands it and it's off his fingers. And this time Davis had position and the ball was just a fraction high. The ball is six inches lower and uh, it's a touchdown. Well, it's again, it's the height thing. Just get into the end zone against the shorter man and I'll throw it up. You can jump for it. This time he just throws it a little bit too high. When they see bump and run, down inside the 10-yard line, they check to the fade route, and that's what that was. Bjorn Merton is into the ball game. He missed the extra point. He will try now a 24-yard field goal. And it's good. So at 11.47 to go in the half, it's 9 to nothing. UCLA over Tennessee. Well, there's one pair of sweaty palms right there, number 16. That's Peyton Manning. And we're guessing that he would be the next Tennessee quarterback uh, if Todd Helton has to leave number the Number six, game. Keith, right there next to him is Stewart. And he does not have his helmet on. And that would tell me, uh, from being on the sidelines for a while, that uh, Manning might be the next guy to go in should anything happen to Helton. Nine to nothing, UCLA leads. Jerry Colquitt, in case you just tuned in, has torn the uh, anterior cruciate ligament in his left knee, and he's gone. Maybe for the season. Well, that's a very poor effort there. That's kind of a uh, half a fungo. As it looks like he caught his feet on the turf, foot on the turf. And I think that was intentional. Get I think they did that intentionally, Keith. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Well, Tennessee's got the ball at the 38-yard line. Yeah. So they've got good field position out of it if it was, in fact, intentional. So 11.40 to go, and uh, here's Tennessee down 9 to nothing, and Todd Helton is in at quarterback. This is the best starting point of the ballgame so far for the Volunteers. Aaron Hayden is the single back and has the ball right here, and pressure coming for the Bruins. Number 40, Rod Smalley, the middle linebacker, turns him back inside, gets help, and there's a loss on the play of about a yard, and here's John Saunders. Keith, Georgia against South Carolina. First and goal here, Steve Tannehill. The hair is cut. He's still slinging the ball. Adobe Cates here for the seven-yard touchdown. Ties the game at seven apiece. Zyre had a 77-yard touchdown pass. Keith. Tannehill got a haircut? <laughs> Couple pretty good quarterbacks in that game. Yeah, you're right. Elton, the left-hander, got it away. Pass is caught on the UCLA side of the field at the 43-yard line by Nidal Sylvan. The left-hander running to his right was able to square his shoulders and get the ball to his receiver. Helton's a good athlete, as we mentioned. Uh, he's going to roll right, take a look from behind him. The offensive line gives him pretty good protection. Linebacker gets through, but pretty good athlete, excellent baseball player. And, and we, what we are told is that he will probably sign a baseball contract at the end of this baseball season or the end of the school year. He is just a junior and could come back next year and play a quarterback. But with those two highly touted uh, freshman quarterbacks coming along, it's expected that he'll sign a baseball contract. Well, the San Diego Padres uh, offered him some big bucks. Yes, they did. Penalty called Tur against uh, Tennessee for having an extra man on the field, apparently, and uh, backs him up a bit with Mose Phillips stepping in there at the fullback position now in front of Aaron Hayden. And Helton gives it to Hayden. This is old power Tennessee ball right here. It goes inside to the 37-yard line on that play. 
The volunteers now will be playing on grass at Neyland Stadium when they go home this season. Again, here's Lynn Swan. Keith, just over my left shoulder is Billy Williams. You know, he got hurt all in the ball game, came back out, went in. Now that shin is really giving him a problem. It's wrapped up pretty heavily. They're going to take him in and at halftime decide whether or not he can come back into this ball game. Yeah. Keith? Well, he's been running around yeah. with some speed, well, that's, but apparently that's, it's hurt. It's not surprising that uh, that is uh, tightened up on him because he did twist that ankle and that uh, shin pretty good. Again, penalty flags. Good ball. Bad start. Offense. 15 second down. Tennessee hurting themselves. And uh, they'll lose five more right there. Bill Fulmer, who succeeded Johnny Majors when Majors had his heart surgery. Fulmer took over the team, did very well, and the Majors moved on to Pittsburgh, and Fulmer got the job. From the 42-yard line now, second down and eight. This is Hayden, and Aaron Hayden, the senior out of Detroit, Michigan, picks up seven, six yards on the carry to about the 38-yard line, and time showing 10 minutes to go in the first half of play. Oklahoma is another team that has gone to grass. This game, however, is being played in Syracuse, and a lot of people were kind of smelling upset. Doesn't appear to be so, does it? Third down and a long three. Helton trying to touch it down the sidelines. Tennessee man is knocked out of bounds. That's a penalty flag. The call is going to go against Carl Greenwood, who would not let Joey Kent turn back into the field of play. This will be Tennessee's deepest penetration of the ball game so far. Well, not many things have gone Tennessee's way here in the first half of this ball game, what with injuries and and what have you, but. Take a look at the end of this play. Kent is out of bounds. Ball was inbounds and catchable. I think that's a good call. As much as we could see, it looked like he was being pushed. Oh, he shoved him right out. Yeah, while the ball was in the air. Rode him out. Hayden is the eye back. Elton keeps and throws, and it is incomplete and almost intercepted again. New York, John Saunders. Keith, it seems we've been waiting a year for this, the debut of Ron Palace of Notre Dame against Northwestern here, hooking up with Mike Miller, 42 yards, setting up a touchdown pass to Derek Mays, nine yards, seven nothing is the lead, Keith. Mike Miller was booted off the team for a while and then worked his way back on. Second down and 10. Eldon's pass, again the left-hander going to the right, comes back and throws on the move. UCLA saying it's no catch, and now the side judge, seeing the play clearly, comes over and waves it off, no catch. Nilo Sylvan was the man for whom the pass was intended. Tennessee usually plays five and six wide receiver. Sylvan is one of those. Never had it. Now, he didn't have control. It touched the ground before he got control of it. It is third and ten for the Volunteers from the Bruin 23-yard line. They run it. And Hayden is down to about the 16. That leaves him at least three yards short. Tomorrow night, after America's funniest home guard for both the kickers, Bruins still lead it nine to nothing. Billy Williams is going to the clubhouse. You don't know if he's got a cracked shin, stress fracture. Who knows? They've already know that Jerry Colquitt's gone. If they lose Colquitt and Williams in the first half of the first game of the season, then that's like having a tree falling. Sherman Shaw is the deep back now for UCLA as they take over after the missed field goal by Bexport. First down at the 20. Give it a Shaw, and uh, that's inches, not yards, on that carry. Scott Gallion, the junior middle linebacker out of Seymour, Tennessee, put the hit on him, and he put it on him solid, number 93. Talking with Larry Marmy uh, this week, he said that Scott Gallion, they have high hopes for this young man. 
He uh, was fourth on the team in tackles last year, did not start, saw a lot of playing time, but he's in there this year, the middle linebacker. They give him a half a yard on the mark, make it second down and nine. Wayne Cook sets him up. His team leading nine to nothing, keeps the ball, gets some heat, chase him up the middle, takes some pounding as he gets to the 25, but he did pick up four and a half yards. A look at the Ogden uh, on the left side, top left, pass blocking, a little twist by Tennessee. A little Ogden. holding by Jonathan. Jonathan was holding his guy all right, but <laughs> <laughs> Christensen inside lost his guy. <laughs> well, he's dealing with uh, Ben Talley over there, and Talley's busy. He's got seven tackles in the ball game already. He's a linebacker that goes into a down position. He's quick. Ogden is very good working at blind side and taking care of his quarterback. You, uh, this is Stokes. And J.J. will have a first down up at the 37-yard line. You know something about having a big old friendly fellow over there on the left side. Yes, sir. You, you want your best pass protector on the left side. There's Stokes at the bottom of the screen. He's just going to go down. A good pass protection. Cook's got a lot of area to see the receiver. Now watch this. Stokes is 6'5", good feet, and a good runner. And doesn't take any hard blows when he sees the end is coming, gets down and let the defensive backs hit over him. So as we go inside seven minutes to go in the first half, the Bruins have it first down just beyond the 37, still working out of that spread formation. They've got three wide outs in this alignment as Cook sets up deep, hands the ball off to number 33. Sean, he's got a big hole on the left side. First down, UCLA at the Tennessee 36-yard line. Shaw showed you his speed that time. The sophomore turned it on. It's a little sweep to our right side. Good blocking by the offensive line and Ogden on the linebacker. Nobody gets close to Shaw till he's 20 yards downfield. Good blocking. Cook throws short. Pass is complete, and the gain will be down to a, close to the 25-yard line and close to another first down as Kevin Jordan makes another catch. Kevin is a junior out of Beltsville, Maryland. They'll bring the change on at 6-11 to play in the first half. I was called Chicago today and spent a few minutes talking to uh, Dick Vermeil. It was 20 years ago today, as we told you early on, these two teams opened the season in Knoxville and played to a 17-17 tie. And I called Dick, and I said, let's talk about uh, 20 years ago today. And he said, you remember that dang sleeper play that they ran on us to pull into a tie? We had them whipped. And sure enough, Stanley Morgan hit on the sidelines, and they popped out of the huddle, caught UCLA on their heels, and Morgan ran right by them and scored the tying touchdown. Terry John Donahue Charo was, was the quarterback for the Bruins. Yeah. Terry Donahue? No, he wasn't. Uh, he was on the staff. But not, I'm saying, uh, yeah. yeah. Terry was there. Yep. 11 out of 14 now, Cook is, for 152 yards and a touchdown. I did that game. I remember it. Morgan went down that sideline like he'd come out of a cannon. Nobody knew where he came from. Uh -oh. Darren Washington looking downfield before he had control of the ball, and it drops away. USC at Penn State next Saturday at 12.30 Pacific Time, 3.30 Eastern Time. The other games will be Ohio State, Washington, Kentucky, Florida. That could be a big ball game right there. They, Bill Curry's got some pretty good folks ready to play up there at Kentucky. Yes, he does. Louisville and Texas and BYU Air Force. So it's a buffet table for you next week. Might check your pay-per-view listing if you've got some brothers amongst that group. Cook. Check. Behind the line of scrimmage, number 91, Jonathan Brown, a freshman out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, makes the hit for Tennessee. Brown's a true freshman, one of the uh, outstanding true freshmen that uh, University of Tennessee signed this year, if not the best, one of certainly one of the best recruiting classes uh, last year by uh, Tennessee. Third down and 17 after that loss. Now they go to the four wideouts. Pretty good protection for Wayne Cook. Throw underneath it. 
nowhere near a first down. They're just trying to pick up a little yardage there, apparently, hoping that Merton would have a chance at it. Brian Adams made the catch. But that'll be a man-sized field goal try. Merton has a new snapper and a new holder this year. Once the, the marker or the holder has uh, put the ball down, he never looks at the upright again. The main reason for that is depth perception is bad. He flunked the Naval Academy depth perception test five times. <laughs> this will be a 45-yard try. Man holding it, Chris Anderson. Kevin Walker is the man holding, and Anderson is snapping, and here's the kick up. Kind of grunts it down the field and got it. He had to huff and puff on it a little bit, but by golly, he got it through, and it's now 12 to nothing Bruin. We're about to see Peyton Manning go into the football game. He's down at the, uh, at the end where they're going to be receiving from. He is down there amongst the offensive line. He is clapping his hands, talking to him, and that is the look of a quarterback that is going in the ballgame. Again, in case you don't know, Archie Manning is his dad. Olivia, uh, Archie and Olivia both are here. He was one of the celebrated uh, quarterback recruits. Came out of uh, Newman School in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. All right, here's Merton now to kick it away for UCLA from the 35. Belts this one. Back into the end zone, two yards deep for Nilo Sylvan. And Sylvan gets up to about the 22-yard line and is taken down there. And here comes Peyton Manning making his entry as a quarterback for the University of Tennessee. Get used to it. I will, he's trying to calm himself down right here, right now. He's clapping, acting calm, but... He probably doesn't have a lot of plays that he knows how to run. He just said, let's go. Just make sure we get these things going. But he has got to be, his heart rate has got to be going 90 <laughs> miles an hour. And he just said, just relax. This is just like high school. But it isn't. They put old trustworthy in there at the tailback position, James Stewart. And Big Jim is out to the 30-yard line for an eight-yard pickup. David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator who is calling the plays now, has got to handle this correctly. Get him into the game. Get him some confidence going. The running game and the running, if he can pick up a couple of first downs with the running game, or as you see the offensive uh, coordinator cutting in the, the coaches, just get the Manning's confidence up, and then the first pass, make it a screen or something easy where you can, uh, a safe pass where you don't have to read too much, and just get his confidence rolling. They have time out on the field Shane Jasper number 90 is shaken up on the play for you uh, Manning's uh, fine what do you think about uh, Fulmer I imagine uh, his head is buzzing too that carry is uh, just nothing to it as uh, Moe Phillips tried to shake off and ruins just swarm all over it. Fulmer came into this uh, with Colquitt and uh, help and thinking about, well, I'm going to redshirt maybe one of those two freshmen. Uh, maybe not. Uh, I, I don't want to play him until later on in the year. Well, as things have turned out, Colquitt's hurt and Helton has been ineffective. And before the half of the first game, one of your freshmen is in there. Hand off. They won't get the first down. James Stewart trying for the first down, and there is a solid hit by the UCLA Bruins as they get Rod Smalley is one of those involved in the action there in the middle and makes the tackle. Well, Bob Field, defensive coordinator, knows that they got a freshman in there, third and short. He's slanting, doing everything he can, and one of the linemen came through and stopped him behind the line of scrimmage, a big series for UCLA defensively. So here's your punt now with Tom Hutton trying to kick him out of trouble with 3.15 to go. That's a pretty good kick. Paul Gidney drops it, picks it up, and pops out. Penalty flag down as Gidry runs the ball all the way back to about the 47-48. Now we got flags all over the place. 42-yard punt. Pretty good size return, but let's see about the penalty. So it's a staggering, struggling start here for the Tennessee Volunteers. Injuries causing them grief. 
Gary Colquitt and Billy Williams. You're right, Keith, in everything you say, but you know, it's it's amazing that you look at the scoreboard, they're only down 12 to nothing. Right. That's illegal use of hands, pushing. It's a 10-yard penalty, so they will move the ball back, and UCLA will go to work back around the 28-yard line, leading 12 to nothing. Time remaining now is 3:04. Peyton Manning obviously yet to throw a pass. They tried to ease him into it as gently as possible. And I think that's smart, Keith. Uh, you don't want to go out there and, uh, and injure the confidence of your uh, freshman quarterback. He, he may have to play the rest of the game. Try to calm him down. Just ease him into it. What did you see? How do you feel? What do you like to throw? What do you, what do you have most confidence in? That's what we'll start off with. Wayne Cook, meantime, looked at he'd love to build something here as he sets up a screen. Ball thrown to Sherman Shaw, and Shaw will pick up eight yards on the play. This is complete to Sherman Shaw. I remember, I don't remember the exact year, but I remember you and I did the ball game when uh, the, the UCLA football team was all beat up and, and uh, everybody wrapped in bandages. They go to Seattle, Washington. Yes. With about a half a team and beat a very good Washington team and knocked them right out of the Rose Bowl. UCLA had a pretty good quarterback going for him, too. Tommy Maddox. <laughs> yeah, he was a baby then, too. Yes, wasn't he? he was. So the kids can do it if they just have the confidence factor. I'm not sure what's going on, folks. I think somebody lost a beanbag. I'm not sure. <laughs> Finally, we're ready to go here. Set him down on second down and a long two. Cook still got it. Pass is good. Caught by Brian Adams. And Adams is out of bounds at the 42-yard line for a first down. Coming up, the Prudential Halftime Report. John Saunders scores and highlights. He's fast playing. How about terrifying? To say the least, huh? Put it on the 43. First down. A lot of time. Lobs it into the middle of the crowd, and Tennessee almost intercepted it. One of the defensive linemen, Leland Taylor, got his hands on it, and Big 57 almost started the other him. way with it. <laughs> oh, Terry, wouldn't that have been something? Terry Donahue's heart's got to be up in his mouth right now. With that little pass, that's the poorest pass I've seen him throw all day. Can you imagine 285-pound uh, Leland Taylor heading that way? <laughs> I'd love to have seen him catch that ball. Second down and ten. Well, they got it turned the wrong way, but it's going to work out all right anyhow. Sherman Shaw goes all the way down to the Tennessee 35-yard line. And here's Lynn Swan. Keith, I'm with Archie and Olivia Manning in the Tennessee section. Archie, Olivia, were you surprised when you saw your son go in the ballgame? Uh, yeah, of course, I knew when Jerry went down, um, that changed things a little bit. I, uh, I really thought Todd was doing a good job, but I, I'm sure they just got to worry about getting some people some snaps, Lynn. Olivia, were you more nervous, or do you think your son was more nervous? Oh, I, I'm more nervous, definitely. He looks awfully young out there to me. Archie, this is a tough situation for your son to be in. What can we expect out of him at this point? Well, he's been out there three weeks, uh, Lynn, but, you know, he's worked hard. He... You know, I was around him today at the hotel, and he was studying plays and really not like someone who was really third on the chart or tied for third on the chart. So I think he's as prepared as you can be in a three-week period. The coaches have, you know, spent a lot of time with him. He, he's really worked hard, and he wanted to play this year. Uh, I just didn't think it was going to be tonight, Lynn. Okay. Archie, Olivia, thank you very much. 35-yard line, second down and 10. This is Milliner. And about three yards on the carry. James Miller. You know, listening to Archie Manning talk, one of the reasons that Peyton Manning didn't go to Ole Miss because he didn't want to follow, follow his dad, uh, Archie, where, you know, and have to live up to the records of the things that his dad did. And then, uh, you know, he wanted to get out of the state away from LSU because he wanted to get away from home, and he thought that Tennessee was the best spot. He didn't think that he was going to be playing this quickly. Out of it. Down and I can seven. understand, though, why he didn't want to go to Ole Miss certainly understand that 
Same reason none of your young ones want to go to Purdue. Well, it's, that's true, and I, I can certainly understand that. They got enough pressure on them already just playing quarterback, having the name Manning, uh, without going to the university where your dad went. 58 seconds to play in the first half. UCLA leading 12 to nothing. Stokes was not on the field the last couple of plays for UCLA, but he's out there now as they're looking at third down and seven with 58 seconds to play in the ball, uh, first half of the ball game, a 12 nothing lead. And again, to sort of recapture what has happened here, the big story, first off, Billy Williams hurts his right leg in the first play of the ball game in a long bomb try. And then Jerry Colquitt, the Tennessee quarterback, who's waited, a fifth-year senior, has waited all these years to play, tears the anterior cruciate ligament in his knee, and he's gone for the season and perhaps for the career. Now here comes in the freshman. Peyton Manning comes into the ball game as he succeeds Todd Helton trying to get something going trying to trying to trigger something here to wake up the Tennessee offense which has been pretty well controlled by the UCLA defense so far third down and seven Wayne Cook underneath doesn't work for much not enough for the first down so they'll be looking at fourth down. Have they summoned Merton or have they summoned the punter? I think you're going to see Burt. Well, he's over there on the sideline right now. And he's coming. So Merton kicked a 45-yarder and a 24-yarder, missed an extra point. So it's been sort of a mixed bag day so far for Bjorn. But he was an All-American kicker as a freshman. I think they're going to take a time out here. Or something. New. One of the players is talking to the referee. <laughs> they do. That's the last time out for UCLA. They have no more. Clock was running 16, down. Yeah, 16 <laughs> seconds. Well, they want to burn it. Yeah. Get the extra point sure. try, then kick it. Sure. If they can make it. The uh, day has been kind of a hazy, but fortunately for the two football teams, it's been kind of cool because we've had in the last couple of weeks some very hot days in this part of the Los Angeles area but quite pleasant right now over at the Coliseum this afternoon the old building reopened as the USC Trojans beat Washington 24 to 17 in a tough hard knocking football game to open the Pac-10 conference that was a good ball game uh, both uh, quarterbacks I thought uh, played well Took a couple of uh, shots uh, early on and, and, and stayed in the ball game. Auburn had to struggle to get out of Oxford, Mississippi against the Rebels today. How about Texas uh, winning uh, at Pittsburgh? Yeah, Johnny Majors almost stole one there. UCLA has controlled the ball through most of this first half. Now Merton's going to line it up and out of uh, Kevin Walker's hold is going to try a 44 yard field goal and uh, Tennessee's going to try to ice him here. They call time. So break out the picnic basket. Nobody wants to finish the first half. Tennessee was a high rolling high scoring outfit a year ago. Nine times they went past 34 points but they also gave up a lot of points. In fact they led the conference in scoring and in fact were second in the nation. They average 43 points a game, but uh, this is a whole new season. And apparently, judging from the start in the first half of this first ball game, it is going to test the metal of the Tennessee coaching staff because they have had a great deal of misfortune already. Back in 1989, this happened, however, for the Volunteers. They came out here. They beat UCLA and got all jacked up and went on to win 11 out of 12 games. That's about 80 percent. Yep. 80 percent of their games since that particular game. Well, that's kind of reaching for an omen. Now, you know, that's that's getting a little spooky. 34 <laughs> yard line. Now it looks like we're finally going to get the snap got some enough foot on it but it's wide to the right 
And so he's made two, missed one, and missed an extra point. And Tennessee will get the ball back with just 10 seconds remaining in the first half of play. I think Tennessee will be very pleased to go in down only 10 points, try to regroup at halftime. And uh, Bill Fulmer bring this group back out as Manning's going to stay on the sideline. And Helton's going Helton's back Helton's going back yeah. out. I think that's good, though. I think it's good that he got Manning in, get him a little action. Then he's going to use either one of these two in the second half, whichever one might be more successful. Elton just touches the ball down. That rolls the clock, and the first half is over. So it's been a half of misfortune for Tennessee. UCLA getting a touchdown on a 51-yard pass run play to Kevin Jordan from Wayne Cook and two field goals from Bjorn Merton and some pretty good defensive play by the Bruins. And they lead by a score, Tennessee. The big story that I can give you is reflected in this first half of play between these two teams as first off UCLA gets on the scoreboard first with a long pass Kevin Jordan from Wayne Cook Jordan just makes it over the goal line missed the extra point six nothing UCLA that's the only touchdown now Jerry Coulter who had been moving Tennessee around pretty well goes down on an option turns up the you and as a result of this play will be gone from an injury called an anterior cruciate ligament tear it is a devastating injury for an athlete it's just a darn shame for Coquit too now, for more news about injured players and sore players in this first half, let's join Lynn Swan. Kate, going on at halftime, Coach Fulmer told me that he's going to play both the freshman quarterbacks. He's going to give them a chance. He wants them to pay attention to what Helton's doing in there. They're both going to play. Billy Williams, who had the sore shin, they're going to test him, see what he can do. If he can withstand the pain, he may play more. On the UCLA side, J.J. Walker was, J.J. Stokes, excuse me, was limping a little bit going into the locker room. He bruised his left knee. He iced it down and stretched it out. They're going to check him out in the second half and see what he can do. But obviously, if J.J. Stokes is in pain and can't play, he's not going to play much in the second half. Keith? All right, Swanee, here we go with the second half as Bexforce kicks it off for the Volunteers and hooks it out of bounds. And UCLA will start the second half of play in good field position up on the 35-yard line. Here are your halftime numbers. And the numbers are all UCLA, total yardage of 277 yards. And for Tennessee, only 109 yards, no turnovers. And uh, Tennessee not doing anything without Jerry Colquitt in, in the first half. Stokes is on the field. You see him pulling on, loosening up the quadriceps, and he will come out with the offensive unit for the second half of play. One of my favorite people in all the world and known by thousands and thousands of people just ambled through here a little while ago, Bob Woodruff. Came out with the Wayne Tennessee Cooper Volunteers for the ball game. It's really fun to see him. He is the man behind the building of the big buildings in Knoxville as much as anybody. Here's the pitch. It comes back to Sharman Shaw, who's having a pretty good football game and will not get back to the line of scrimmage as the Tennessee defense shows a little better penetration on that particular play. This would be UCLA's best starting point of the ball game. So put it on the 34, call it second down and 11 for the Bruins. Wayne Cook had a pretty good first half himself. Very steady performance, but only one touchdown scored in the ball game so far. Cooks with a convoy to the left, delivers the ball. It is off the hands of Darren Washington, who came out of the backfield. And it falls incomplete, so it'll be third down and 11. And uh, Cook now shouting to his teammates, let's go. And the Tennessee fans down to our left uh, in the end zone are trying to get their defensive unit fired up. This is a big series for the Volunteers. If they can stop UCLA and get the ball back, uh, get a little bit of momentum after coming out at halftime, I'm sure Bill Fulmer tried to fire him up, saying, the SEC season starts next week. Let's get some momentum for that. So they work out of the wide formation of the shotgun, and Cook delivers the ball. It's too low. 
Fourth row. Fourth row. He threw the ball right into the ground. Darren Washington was out there and had a chance to run for the first down. Exactly and it was right. a bad throw by Wayne Clark. Tennessee dropped off in zone. Nobody was open downfield. You've got to stick that man with the ball so he can run with it and not force him to dive at it. Darren Shaker comes in for his second punt. His first one was 33 yards. He pops this one out of there. It's a low line drive. Got a little daylight here for Sean Summers. But penalty flags fly as the Bruins get down in a hurry and take Summers down. So let's see about the penalty call as Jim Springer, the referee, runs down the field. The, the story on the Tennessee part here is they go from here back to Athens, Georgia next week to play Eric Zire, the Georgia Bulldogs, and about 86,000 hostile fans in Athens. So their next stop is not going to be easy. And then they have Florida after that. Yep. Return. block in the back by the return team. Penalty half the distance from the goal line. From the spot of the foul, first and ten. They play at Georgia, Florida, and then they have to go down and play Jackie Sherrill's bunch in Starkville. And Washington State apparently is not going to be a breather either because they beat Illinois the other night in Chicago. Todd Helton comes out to start the second half for Tennessee, the more seasoned of the reserve QBs. Dave Stewart and Mose Phillips line up behind him, and this is Stewart, who's looking this season if he can gain 991 yards to become the all-time Tennessee rushing leader. There's a gain on the play of two yards, and here are the offensive leaders in the first half. The stats for Tennessee aren't going to be very good. Uh, Colt could was three for four before he got hurt. Not very good for Helton. Stewart leads the rushers, and Sylvan and Jones with one reception apiece. Here are the first half possessions. They punted the first three times and missed the field goal. Nothing in five possessions first half for Tennessee. It's Stewart again, and he carries out to about the 24-yard line. They've got to go, I mean, to the 19-yard line. They've got to go to the 20 for their first down. I think what Fulmer told this group at halftime is that the quarterback job is wide open. I'm going to play Manning. I'm going to play uh, Helton. And I'm even going to play Stewart, the other freshman quarterback, because we have a we have an SEC uh, conference schedule to play. And there's Stewart right there, number six. We have a schedule to play. We need a quarterback. I don't care if it's a freshman, whoever it is. We need results. James Stewart for the first. Amos Phillips for the first down. As Stewart stepped into the pack and helped shove it back. And so move the chains to the 21. First down for Tennessee. First down, Tennessee. But I'll say this, Keith. It is tough to try and give three quarterbacks enough snaps to get somebody ready for a ball game. You've got you to have a feel. Somebody's got to step up, do something well, and he has got to be the guy that's going to get the majority of snaps, snaps because none of them have that much experience. Helton, the left-hander, delivers the ball, and it's underthrown, incomplete, intended for the tight end, David Horn. And it's the first time today that we have seen Horn uh, get the ball. They don't throw to their tight ends much. Horn only caught eight passes all of last year. That ball was catchable, but it could have been thrown a little better. Brandon Stewart, we're talking about, in case you don't know of him, is a 6'2", 210-pound freshman out of Stephenville, Texas, and highly, highly regarded. Billy Willard Williams loosening up on the sidelines. It looks like he might be back in the game. Stewart pounding ahead will have the better part of five yards on that carry to make it third down at about five. They play on grass at the Rose Bowl. Notre well, we Dame is out at halftime, 21-3 over Northwestern. Yeah. We came into the game, Keith, saying that Tennessee needed to, to, to lean on that offensive line in their running game because of the inexperience of Colquitt. Now that, that is really the case because Colquitt is not there. Williams is back in. That's good news. Williams, the speedster, out of the shotgun. The pass is thrown too high and goes incomplete, intended for Kendrick Jones. So Helton had a chance there to pick up the first down and did not deliver the ball on target. So the next series, we may see another quarterback. Boy, this is a tough way to start. Well, he's <laughs> almost treating it like a preseason yep. game, if you will. Yep. You know, and this doesn't mean anything in our conference. Uh, let's right. get some, find a player, find a quarterback. Paul Guidry is the deep man for Tom Hutton's putt. Low line drive, not much air under this one. And here comes Guidry. And he won't get much out of it. It's about a seven yard return after a 42 yard punt. <laughs> 
UCLA leading by a score of 12 to nothing with a penalty flag on the field. That 75 down on the field is the 75th year of UCLA. Football, 125th year for college football. back in the back by the return team 10 yards from the start of the foul first and 10. that is three times in this ball game we have had that penalty call twice on the Bruins you just have to wonder where the fairness of it all is for Jerry Colton waited his turn worked hard and didn't complain and then to have that happen to him in the first quarter of the ball game. UCLA's ball first down at the 28 yard line. Pitch it back to Sherman Shaw. And he turns it across the 30 to the 32 before he's brought down. Now here is Lynn Swan. Keith, I'm with John Colquitt, uh, the father of Jerry. Can you tell us what happened in the locker room? Well, it was very disappointing and very emotional. And uh, he broke down behind it and we all feel bad for him but I think it, he's still got a future ahead of him and he can still be successful. Uh, what did you tell him when he was in the locker room lying on the bench crying? Well I just told him that it wasn't the end of life you know that he can still be a successful human being mm -hmm. and be a productive citizen so uh, and I think he'll be able to bounce back I still think he's got a future ahead of him and I think he can play the game he's a good he knows the game well and he, he is, he's got a future ahead of him. Uh, Academically as well as athletic, I still think he'll be successful. So we know it's a tough moment for you and Jerry, and we we certainly do feel bad to see him wait for so long and then suddenly have this kind of an injury. Sure, I do. Of course we do. We look forward to seeing him for five years now, and it's kind of a I guess it's not a letdown for the fans. I hope they don't they still support him and the rest of this ball team because I still think we're gonna have a good team the rest of the year. So. You know, I think we need to go ahead and stand behind them and still cheer for them and pull them through. John, thank you very much. Thank you, Liam. You know, Keith, even though he has been redshirted and he has been at Tennessee for five years, there is a chance that he could petition the NCAA and get a sixth year of eligibility because of this uh, uh, injury situation that happened in the first game. Rusty Medeiros at the University of Miami. Yeah. And Conley the linebacker at Conley yep. at Syracuse did that. I don't know if he would want to do that or what, but there is that uh, precedent that has been set. Yeah, the thought wanders through my mind, too, as we see penalty flags flying and a call coming up here for intrusion there. It's, uh, some, it looked like Tennessee jumped offside or was drawn off. They jumped offside. But it's these kind of people, Bob, that oftentimes make great coaches, too. They... Um, you know they face denial but they they know the game well enough and they are impart they impart a special kind of spirit to other people and it's you never know but we wish him well David Cutcliffe the offensive coordinator says he knows the offense better than any player he's been around for five years and I like what his dad said you know it's you know life goes on yep it does indeed second down now and three very short three more like two and Shaw gets the first down for UCLA. So the Bruins now move inside the Tennessee 45 yard line leading by a score of 12 to nothing with nine minutes and 26 seconds to play in the third quarter. Shaw has reached 86 yards in 12 carries so he's having a pretty good ball game. James Stewart is uh, marching right along but he does not yet have those kind of numbers for Tennessee. And the Bruins have been able to pretty well contain and control the Tennessee running game, which was thought to be their principal offensive weapon. Cook pumps it and then throws it. And he thought J.J. Stokes would break it down the sidelines, and he didn't. He turned it short, and they don't hook up. After tonight's game, we'll pick a Chevrolet MVP of the game from each team 24th year that the Chevrolet Scholarship Program has been giving $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of the competing schools. Stokes playing with a knee that has grown tender as the game has gone along. Number one is Ronald Davis, who has oftentimes tonight had the chore of trying to cover J.J. And he's done a fair to middle of job of it, frankly. He's been flagged one time for a penalty. He's backing up now, giving him a little more room as Cook looks and throws to Jordan. 
and uh, Jordan on this side has the ball sail over his head. Tennessee doing a nice job messing with Cook's mind that time. Marmee, the defensive coordinator, had him up there giving a blitz look. They had blitzed the time before. Cook kind of checked off. Tennessee backed out and threw the ball away. Nice defensive series so far for Tennessee. Larry Marmee, of course, the uh, former head coach at Arizona State University. And I think one of the better defensive coaches in yes. the game today. Yes, yes, yes. Third down and ten. Down the middle, Stokes. First down at the 22-yard line of Tennessee. He's quiet, he's quiet, and then bang, he's got you. <laughs> here he is here. He is just going to go down and break to the inside as the defensive men are going to go to their, it's going to be a deep zone. If I can clear the telestrator, we'll get to see it. Just goes down, <laughs> breaks to the inside. Look at this. He's got men all around him, but because of his height, 6'5", and a nice throw by Cook, comes comes away with a nice reception. He is now UCLA's career leader in receiving yards, 2,048, having passed Sean LaChapelle, who had 2,007. And this is James Milliner trying to get outside, and he doesn't get anything out of it. He loses a yard off the play, and let's find out about what's shaking with the Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> Well, Keith, Georgia needs a win because they play Tennessee next week and up against South Carolina. Steve Tannehill of the Gamecocks, a couple of pump fakes to the end zone on the 10-yard run. He's also thrown for one, ties the game at 14 apiece, and Kentucky beats Louisville 20 to 14. Keith, back to you. Oh, I would not want to have supper with Howard Schnellenberg. <laughs> at least he got the game with Kentucky, though. But he's been yeah, he did. Made some money out of it. Pass. Drifting into the corner, almost intercepted by Ronald Davis. It falls away incomplete. Mike Wynn, number 81, was the intended receiver on the play. The young man of Vietnamese heritage. He's a, I guess the first regular player, or there's been a kicker from Vietnam, but the first regular player ever play football in college football Mike Wynn third down and 11 they got the four wideouts in there again pressure coming backside and they dump it off underneath to uh, Avery Anderson and nothing there for him and Cook took a lick oh did he ever Number 23 in the middle of your screen is Summers. He is an extra defensive back as Cook is being pressured. It's a wide receiver screen, and Summers gets up because if he doesn't make the tackle, there was a lot of running room. It was Ben Talley that laid Cook down with authority. This is a 40-yard field goal try by Bjorn Merton. He's hit two. He's missed one. He's made three. He's three out of four, and it's 15 nothing. UCLA leads Tennessee. Sea Sports brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest swan here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. UCLA 15 nothing over Tennessee, and I think we're going to see Brandon Stewart coming in, making his first appearance at quarterback as Coach Phil Fulmer starts the search for the successor to Jerry Colbert. Kendrick Jones joins Nilo Silva as a kick returner now with Billy Williams banged up. 15-yard line at Silva. Fought. Bruins hang on to him up around the 28-yard line. That's where Tennessee would go to work. And here comes Brandon Stewart out of Stephenville, Texas. Now he's a true freshman for UT, UT fans that may not know all this. No, it's now Hilton. Hilton they Hilton. changed their mind. Well, <laughs> they had Stewart up there, and he was talking, 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 <laughs> and all of a sudden, Hilton comes racing out on the field. So. <laughs> Hilton had his, uh, had his helmet off. He was uh, yep. slapping Stewart on the back, saying, all right, go get him. And at the last minute, they changed their mind. So Aaron Hayden is now in the... Uh, Backfield will be the deep back for Tennessee along with Mose Phillips. As they come up, Hilton at quarterback. 
Aaron Hayden, who has had arthroscopy himself, has the ball here, trying to cut back inside, and that is real good defensive football right there by UCLA. The man who did it was Philip Ward. Now here's John again. Keep the fighting. Second down and 12 here as Helton left hands the ball upfield to the tight end David Horn. And Horn goes for a Tennessee first down. So they move the chains on that play as the tight end finally gets involved. Well, UCLA defensively has really ignored the, the tight end because Tennessee doesn't throw that many balls. They're doubling the wide ones. Helton saw it this time, got the ball to him, and uh, Horn did a nice job with it. Somebody's playing some pretty cute games down on that Tennessee sideline. <laughs> I thought your comment, though, was revealing in that Fulmer now and his staff kind of forced to treat this as a preseason game. Yeah. They go looking for a quarterback. Well, the other thing that they're doing is that they're giving up the redshirt year of Peyton Manning, which yep. he's already played, yep. and Stewart almost gave up his rush. Both Manning and Stewart are true freshmen. Yep. They've been in camp for three weeks. Manning has already played, and Stewart almost played. There's uh, Stewart number six, and uh, Fulmer needs to find somebody. One of these three, they only have three quarterbacks left on the, on the roster that can uh, handle uh, the chores for the Vols this year. Billy Williams is out there on the field again, so like it all. It is second down and 10. The they're, ball is at the 42. They're giving him something to think about now. There's about nine guys up right near the line of scrimmage. He throws it, and he cannot hook up with Williams. Williams out there covered by Teddy Lawrence, number two. It was the opening play of the ball game when Williams uh, went deep on a bomb and Teddy Lawrence ran right with him, step for step, and was right in his face when the ball arrived. And it was on that play, way downfield, that Billy Williams suffered the injury. He just came down wrong on yep. his ankle and twisted it and strained uh, something in his ankle or lower leg. It's got to be stiff on him right now. It is third down. And 10. Out of the shotgun. Goes quickly. Goes down hard. He took a wallop from number 23, Donnie Edwards. Edwards just ripped him one. Right here, they got the blitz coming. When you got somebody in there that really may not know exactly what they're doing, uncovered. Nobody's blocking on him. He gets in there free and does a nice job of getting his hands up. Helton saw it, but couldn't get the ball past him. And Hutton is back in to punt. Sixth of the day. This is a very good punt. Gidry all the way back to the nine-yard line with a fair catch. A 49-yard punt, no return, 551. Play of the third quarter and a 15-0 Bruin lead. And Eastern 6 Pacific on ABC's Monday Night Football. Looking forward to that one. The Raiders uh, the surprise team maybe in the AFC and San Francisco's picked up a lot of players. Be interesting to see. That'll be a great start for the ABC Monday Night game. Sherman Shaw breaking out from the 9. He takes it to the 29. right from behind the defense good blocking up front Gallion is 93 UCLA offensively getting their running game going over 100 yards in the first half that gets him out of a hole right there Sherman Shaw with 13 carries 106 yards in the ball game so far and UCLA now as we have a timeout on the field J.J. Stokes is still out on the field, a sore knee and all, his team comfortably ahead. You know, one of the things that, you know, you're always taught when you have a dominant receiver like Stokes and All-American coming back is double coverage. And, you know, one of the things I was always taught was they double cover the receiver, go somewhere else. But with Stokes, you can't do that. You have to, you have to stay with him. And I'd like to ask Lynn Swan the different things you can do against diff double coverage to get open, Lynn? Well, well, certainly you read it and you try and find the open area, but as a team player, you say to yourself, well, we've got Jordan on the other side. We'll go to him and open things up. 
But the individual ego says, especially when you're 6'5", it doesn't matter if I'm double covered. If the defensive back is 5'10", throw it up there, I'll make the catch or at least knock the ball down. Just give me a chance. See? From the 29, Cook looks good protection, passes away, passes thrown into the crowd, safe but incomplete. But some players, like Stokes, are good enough that they can get open against two players, two defensive players. Like, when I was playing with Warfield, he would practice, we wouldn't practice against one-on-one. -on -one. He'd say, all right, if they play, if when they go double coverage, this is how I'm gonna run the route. And I knew exactly on every route, when they double covered him, how he was gonna run it. And I'm sure that Stokes is able to beat double coverage as easy now as he has beat single coverage. On second 10, out of the spread, handed off inside to Shaw. Sherman Shaw is having a big opening game. And uh, if that entire group of running backs, the UCLA has got dinged up, banged around, if they get healthy, look out. They're going to cause a lot of trouble in this Pac-10 conference. Averaging almost eight yards per carry. Third down. 11. Shaw's got the ball. And the Volunteers cover him well. Davis is over there, number one, to help take him down. And the kicking team will come in now for the Bruins. At four minutes and 30 seconds to play in the third quarter, leading 15 to nothing. And Tennessee searching for a quarterback. We'll see who they send this time. And it does not appear that it's going to be Peyton Manning. Stewart, I don't know. We expected him to come the last time. Tennessee may need a spark from their kick return uh, game. It was very good last year. Pretty good kick by Shager. Low line drive type. Here's uh, they're trying to return it. Sean Summers, but he can't generate much of a return out of it. It's a 47-yard punt. And Tennessee will have the football at about their 27-yard line. I asked Phil Fulmer yesterday how in the world it was that he was able to get two quarterbacks of the quality true freshmen of Peyton Manning and Brandon Stewart. Here's what he said. Both of them, I think, recognize some of the things that we were talking about earlier. It's a great place to go to school. It's a great place to live. Uh, the support is tremendous. The opportunity was there uh, that we can fit either one of them into our offense, even though they both have a little bit different styles. And one wasn't afraid of the competition with the other. And I think that's... Uh, that's what college football is all about. Go and compete and win the job. Well, Brandon Stewart is in the game now, getting his first snap, and he fumbled it. <laughs> He'll always remember that, But too. he was able to control it and then <laughs> pulled it down and took off. And uh, now the jitters are gone because the Bruins, uh, they rubbed his face in the turf. He picked up two yards in his second down and eight. He was an outstanding quarterback. He came out of the state of Texas high school. There's another guy in the backfield right now, uh, Jay Graham. Here's the first pass by Stewart. It's on the money. He split the numbers of Benji Schuler, and Schuler has a first down for Tennessee outside the 45-yard line. That is a big throw for a true freshman quarterback in his second play. I mean, your first play, you fumble the snap when you get your brains beat out when you have to scramble around. That is a big... He is pumped right now, I want to tell you. That is the longest play of the night for Tennessee. He threw a rope, too, boy. There was no loft on that thing. He would just pop. He put the cross on him. Give it to Mose Phillips, the fullback. And Mose will go to midfield for a pickup of about four yards on the play. I've started to say that there's a young man named Jay Graham who had just checked into the backfield, number 25, a sophomore from Kannapolis, North Carolina, that they say is going to be a great running back. But he... he his mama said uh, he's coming to Tennessee, but I don't want you to redshirt him. So he played last year as a true freshman, even though they had four outstanding tailbacks. There he goes. Jay Graham is a great skater. And he picks up about three yards on the carry, and here is John Saunders. Well, Keith, as you know, Heath Schuler decided to come out early, and Tennessee's feeling that heat now. Eric Zier decided to stay in school. Georgia happy because here he hooks up with Hassan Graham for the second time in the game. He has touchdown passes of 72, 37, and 63 yards. Keith. 
Well, Zaire, no question, uh, gives Georgia plenty of offense. What Georgia needs is some stop. They need some defense. The handoff to Graham, and that's going to be a first down. Jay Graham, six feet, 206 pound sophomore, and he hits him there with authority. Tomorrow night, after America's Funniest Home Videos, an ABC movie special from the end. There's the time remaining in the third quarter. On first and ten, on the Bruins side of the field from the 43-yard line, Brandon Stewart puts it high. Incomplete. Joey Kent almost had a spectacular play, but when he came down, the ball came loose. Joey is 6-1. If he'd have been 6-2, he'd have had the catch. Kent's asking for a, a break. This is a nice throw, just a tad long, and maybe a little bit inside. The defensive man gets there, and Kent just drops it. But for a freshman playing in his first varsity football game, that was a good throw. Second down and 10. Looked like one of the linemen moved, maybe Smith, the guard. Third down, ball start, offense. Five yards, repeat second down. The big Jeff shaking his head. He weighs in at 310 out of Decatur, Tennessee. Part of that offensive front. It's like old Jeff's put away a little sawmill gravy. Uh-huh. And biscuits. Uh-huh. <laughs> Good to get you to eat it yet. Second down and 15 now as Stewart steps in after the penalty. They give him good protection. His pass is again right on it. Pass is complete to Kendrick Jones. Jones gets past the marker and has a first down for the Volunteers. So really for the first time tonight, the Tennessee offense is showing some spark. First down at the UCLA 29. You see Stewart all the way over to the sideline getting the play firsthand because he doesn't understand the signals. He doesn't know the, the, when they wigwag the plays in. So you get to run the plays in and what the players are telling. You can't go to the sideline every time with the quarterback. You can't do that. They will run it. Just power at the right side with Graham carrying, going in behind uh, Ratliff and Smith for the penalty flag drops. There's Stewart again coming over to get the next play. You wear him out running back and forth. Never had to come back all the way to the sideline to get the play. But uh, this young man is certainly pumped up and he's got some confidence going now. He's just got to be careful that he doesn't try and throw the ball. Where he, where he shouldn't. He shouldn't force the ball. He's got some good uh, completions under his belt. He doesn't know. He doesn't know the whys and the wherefores. All he knows is who he's going to throw the ball to. I mean, it, it, he's only been, been in, uh, in, in Knoxville for three weeks. How many plays can you learn in three weeks, especially when you're, you, you have two guys uh, ahead of you, like Colquitt and uh, Helton. Tennessee just got hit with a 15-yard penalty for shot block. They're, they're shooting themselves in the foot right now. That's the seventh penalty and uh, totaling 58 yards under the flag. So here they were down on the 29-yard line with the first down, and bingo, 15 yep. yards, back them up. I mean, that's really putting the freshman in a hole. It'll be second down and 23. It should be first down, shouldn't it? No, it was well, no, it was second down before. Penalty occurred on second down. Yeah. The down remains the same. First down. Yeah, it's well a yard. First down, yeah. All right. First down and 23. Just don't try to pick it all up here on one play. Big throw to the sidelines over everybody. Billy Williams was over there, but Teddy Lawrence was right in his bucket. That's a long throw, Bob. That's a strong arm. It's a strong arm. 
Take a look at the pass protection. 98 is Kersky. Comes off the block late and gets Whoa, a 77 hit. 77's the one that popped it. Yeah. That's Stretz. He came yeah. from the other side. Brady Spitz. They're all up Second there. down and 23, and they're all looking him right in the eye. Down the middle, throws a bullet, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Joey Kent. I mean, this kid throws it. That's a John Elway kind of a pass. He's got a good arm, and what he's doing now, he just he knows where the routes are. His people are going, but he's not. He doesn't know enough defenses to read the defensive secondary. He's coming all the way over to get the next play given to him verbally. We're inside a minute to go in the third quarter, 54 seconds. Harry Donahue having a look. He's in his 50s. I can't believe it. I still remember him. He was a little old skinny kid that showed up on Tommy Prothrow's team. Defensive lineman, wasn't he? Yep. A tough on a doorknob. Stewart takes off. Look at this. Nifty little move. And gets down to the 31-yard line before they finally take him down. Andy Colbert finally found him. He went all the way across the field. So to remind you of a guy named Shuler from the Carolina <laughs> Mountains, doesn't it? Well, Shuler struggled some as a freshman also, if you'll remember that. Take a look at what he sees, all right? This is the, this is the angle that he sees. A lot of people running around. Didn't see anybody open. Saw a lot of UCLA defenders. It was almost a, uh, a slap up around the head. John Bexford trying to get the volunteers on the board from the 38-yard line, a 48-yard try, and he's hooked it left. He misses, hooked left from 48, and the volunteers who were last shut out September 5, 1981 in Athens, Georgia, 44 to nothing, continue scoreless here in 1994 at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Tennessee just needs something to get. The, they need a kickstart. Bexford is an all-conference place kicker. In fact, he made uh, an All-American team or two last year. They need their offense needs some help, and the, the uh, field goal kicker can give it to him, but he's just missed two field goals to the left. Nothing has gone right for the Volunteers here tonight. So the Bruins take over, and it's first down at their own 31. I'll tell you what, the way the Bruins are playing the game and with Tennessee searching, 15-point lead going into the fourth quarter is big. If it was 14-13, that'd be different, but it's 15. But at the same time, if you score a couple of touchdowns, if Fulmer can get one of those quarterbacks and go for a two-point conversion. Third quarter is over, and <laughs> we'll be back with more between Tennessee and UCLA after this message and the word from our ABC station. Let's go to the final quarter of play. UCLA with the football. Second down and eight, leading Tennessee 15 to nothing at the Rose Bowl. Wayne Cook has had a good night. Sets up and wants to go deep. Let's it fly. And it is Kevin Jordan. Makes the catch at the 15-yard line with Deron Jenkins all over him. What's man? Jay Stokes with an ice bag on his left knee likes the play. Cook sets again and sidearms it into the ground incomplete. That was intended for Avery Anderson, and here's Swanee. Yeah, Keith, as you can see, their All-American wide receiver and Heisman Trophy candidate is out for the rest of this ball game. The knee is just bruised, certainly not as serious as Jerry Colquitt's injury, but you need this man throughout the entire season. The best thing is keep him out in this last quarter, let him heal up so he can come back and help the team throughout the season. Keith? They have SMU next, and then they get to go play the Cornhuskers in Lincoln, and they play on turf back there. Stokes finishes the night, six catches, 84 yards, and all of them good for first down. Second down and 10. Ball at the Tennessee 15. This could be a door slammer for UCLA. This could be a blitz right here, too. Yep. Here you come. He got it off. He completed it to Mike Wynn. Mike Wynn fighting to the five-yard line. And not quite a first down. He won't get the mark. Well, 
when you walk around with sword ease and you start playing on turf against big strong teams like a Nebraska you want everybody healthy better hurry they're not going to get this off third down and short and they get a timeout just before they get hit for the five yard penalty All right, you've got the baby bull backfield in there right now for UCLA. You put James Miller to number 36 in there, and then you add Ford to it. That's 250 pounds of blocking back. You sort of get the feeling they're going to go right, don't you? Cook looks like he might have changed his mind as he came to the line of scrimmage on third down and very short. They give it to Milliner, and he doesn't. He loses. He lost yardage. They were all screwed up. They never did. He went Cook checked off. They were never squared away, and they're going to lose a yard at least. John Emery dove in there and messed it up, caused the loss, and now they're going to go for a field goal. One of the big differences in this game, Keith, has been the field goal kickers. Burton, as we see here, has made three field goals, and Vexford has missed a couple that could have possibly gotten something started for Tennessee offensively. Burton, good from 24, good from 45, missed from 44, and good from 40. This will be 20 three yards tough angle that's the toughest thing about this kick it's good and so at 13 minutes and six seconds to play you can go ahead and relax a little more JJ it's 18 to nothing UCLA and incidentally Mark Dellens came in to tell us that he is told he is the SID at UCLA that it is a bruised quad more than it is a knee for J.J. Stone. Tomorrow, the PGA's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys in Florida? Yeah. Guys in Florida, just look out. He's coming home with a weapon. I'll be talking to Mike. Burton will kick off now, and Kendrick Jones will be... Deep along with Nilo Sylvan. Sylvan is 83 and Jones is 27. field goals in a ball game for Merton is a career high for him. Helton looks like he's coming back as the quarterback now. After Brandon Stewart had a series, Helton returns. Jerry Colquitt, if you just joined us, tore the anterior cruciate ligament in his left knee, and he's gone. There's UCLA scoring drive. They lead 18 to nothing. And you've got James Stewart and Moe Phillips in the backfield now. And run it with Stewart, and he'll move it for about three yards. Tennessee losing its quarterback. James Stewart. Go immediately into almost a preseason posture, trying to find somebody to fill the role. And Phil Fulmer, who is well liked, he's a very honest man. He goes straight to his players. He looks them right in the eye, and he he said, "Look." I can just hear it. We got to find somebody to play quarterback. Now you guys go. Everybody get a chance. Go do something about it. That pass almost caught by Joey Kent. Joey's had one of those nights. Should have been caught. Yep. It was off his shoulder pad. That's three times tonight that Kent's had a chance to make a spectacular play, but unfortunately he hasn't made them. He has, however, caught three balls in the 13 yard. All the attention given to Schuler leaving last year. They also lost the two wide receivers from last year, and Kent was uh, counted on to uh, supply some some uh, sound receiving from the outside. Not so tonight. The left-hander fires hard, and it is good. It's beyond the 35 to the 37, and it is Courtney Epps, who is a redshirt freshman from Dallas, Texas. Courtney Epps is one of six wide receivers on this Tennessee football team that are freshmen, and they're all between 18 and 19 years of age. All teenagers, and they've all set records in their respective states. And they're big people. 
Throws it again. This one down the middle. And the pass is complete to the UCLA 46. And this time, Joey Kent makes the catch. Tennessee has had a history of good receivers. They've called it wide receiver university. Seven were drafted in the first round of the National Football League, the last being Alvin Harper. Well, they've put 14 first-rounders in the NFL since 1984, and oh, seven of them wide oh, receivers. Yeah, overall, seven yeah. wide receivers. Elton back. Gets some pressure, throws underneath to Stewart. Stewart gets a screen going. He pounds along to the 30, inside to the 29. Now the Tennessee offense is moving. And here's John Saunders. He's Syracuse trying to... Oh. It is first down, Tennessee, at the UCLA 29-yard line, and Aaron Hayden now is in the backfield, and Helton will give it on a reverse. They've got the screen set up over there, the blocking working well, and here comes oh. Nilo Subban all the way to the corner and out of bounds at the two-yard line. Great run by Subban. Somebody got a block. Well, the reverse is going to start. It's almost like the old Statue of Liberty play where you go back and then at the last minute, watch the block coming from the left side here. Right here. Oh, wow, Lawrence. Teddy Lawrence got level. Lawrence got level, but get the number of that truck. So it is first and goal for Tennessee, and give it to Mose Phillips. And he's in there for the touchdown. The Volunteers have finally scored. With 11-12 to play in the ball game. Must be frustrating for a team that ranked second in the nation last year in scoring points not to score until the fourth quarter. It appears they're going to go for two. Helton is in there, so Todd Helton, number two, the baseball player, who still fences himself as quite a football player, and he's beginning to show it. Great back, throw it in a hurry, inside dive, Billy Williams, it is eight points for Tennessee, and now it's a ten-point lead for UCLA. Every team has a chart, Keith, that tells you if you're down by so many points, what to go for. And if you're down by 18, it's go for two if you make, I mean, yeah. You, then you'll only be down by 10. Wide receiver screen is their two-point play. And he limps into the end zone. Todd Helton, who just took the Volunteers down the field for a scoring march and put them on the board with a two-point conversion, 76-yard drive, talking on the telephone, getting the information for the next possession. Bexport kicks it off. It is Brian Adams. Woof! Some folks are starting to fly around a little bit now as Adams is taken down at the 16-yard line. There is some hitting going on in this Ooh. game now. Greg Johnson, no turnovers so far today by either team, and that in itself is quite remarkable. That was one of the game. things that we were looking for was the mistakes on both sides. No turnovers. UCLA defensively led the nation in takeaways last year with 19, with 39. Tennessee man uh, jarred as a result of the collision on that uh, kick coverage. Wayne Cook comes back, gives to Shaw. Tennessee defense now starting to come alive. Shaw's taken down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of two yards. It'll be second down and 12. Jesse Sender is the man who made that hit. He is a junior from Sebring, Florida. Arizona State and Oregon State having at it. Oregon State, of course, one of the few teams in the country running the wishbone. Jerry Pettibone running it up there and may surprise some folks this year. Here's the pitch to Sharman Shaw, who's had a big night, over 100 yards, turns it upfield to about the 22-yard line. Brought down by Jason Parker, the junior out of Garland, Texas. 
always interesting to look at what San Jose is doing because old friend John Ralston is the coach there. John went away to the pros and off to a number of other things and giving advice to the world and now he's come back to coach again. Yes. San Diego State 56 to 7 in the third quarter over Navy. Ted Tolner is the new coach at San Diego State. It is third down and five. This is Milliner. And the volunteers stop him short of the first down. Tennessee defense celebrates his pin tally, and Jason Parker make the play. Parker is an outstanding player. He has started since he was a freshman. He is one of the top safeties in the SEC. I'm going to make a donation to the University of Tennessee to see if we can get their jersey numbers trimmed so that we can see what the numbers are. This is number 23, Sean Summers. Very difficult numbers to see. I'll donate to that cause. <laughs> <laughs> and Summers is taken down, but the Volunteers have very good field position out on their own 43-yard line. Energizer battery. It keeps going and go. Sally Brown on the uneven bars. No matter how well you plan, no matter how hard you try, there's always the possibility that something can go wrong. That's why nobody should be without the protection of a big, strong insurance company. MetLife. Get met. It pays. Terry Donahue grows concerned on the UCLA side. Tennessee comes up on the 43. That's their best starting point. Todd Helton is your quarterback with Aaron Hayden, the single back. Almost dropped that ball. Gets some pressure. Takes off. Steps out of bounds, sort of tiptoeing up the sidelines. The play was sort of messed up from the very beginning because you can see Aaron Hayden was questioning something, probably with the snap count. So they were never really solidly set. Lynn Swan has a message for us from Bubba. Yeah, well, after Greg Johnson made that big tackle on the kickoff, Bubba, Bubba jumped up and looked at me and said, Swanee, there ain't no quit on this football team. We're going after it. And this is a great opportunity with J.J. Stokes on the sideline. That's Bubba number 71 at center. He is the leader of the offensive front, according to his coach. And Aaron Hayden was within a half a step of breaking a big play there. But Ted Mulkey would have none of it. And the junior out of Sacramento brought him down at the 49 of UCLA. Take it to 48. Eight minutes and 40 seconds to play in the ball game. 18 to 8, UCLA leads. And that's not enough time for Tennessee not to continue to move this ball. They need to make... Uh, first down right here. They've got it as James Stewart comes into the ball game, goes over the top, and he goes right up. So the Volunteers first down at the UCLA 46. And this one, uh, the, the Volunteers get one in the end zone, and uh, we'll have a white knuckler. Case is leaving. George Case leaves uh, the nose guard position for UCLA. Elton's pass is drilled and the pass is completed at the 40 yard line and the caught by David Horn the tight end sports 755 to play in the ball game second down and five Elton play action throws pass caught that's Horn again the tight end first down Tennessee at the UCLA 29 yard line let's check in on South Carolina and Georgia again with John and life is getting more tense in the Rose Bowl as Helton throws on a screen caught by Mose Phillips and Phillips is going to have about seven yards on the play. The blitz was on yes. and he got away from it. Helton is gaining confidence too. They have blitzed him the last two times and he's made positive plays right in the face of that blitz. So what we're seeing here in this fourth quarter of play may very well be a young man winning the quarterback job at the University of Tennessee. 
He's hit his last six passes for 69 yards. James Stewart is in the ball game, and he's going over the left side and picks up another Tennessee first down as he fights his way to the UCLA 10-yard line. Eight thousand volunteer fans came for the game. They have been quiet most yes, of the night. It's been kind of a gloomy night for them. The fourth quarter has been pretty exciting. They're way down at the other end of the uh, field. They're at the other end zone from where uh, Tennessee's going in. Helton rolls it out. Stewart's in front of him. Helton throws. He's my gosh, it's a touchdown, Tennessee. I don't know how in the world Courtney Epps got the ball. It had to go right through the arms of the Bruin go, defender. Go, I thought it was going to be picked it. off. It go, but it works for a touchdown. Here's all the action out here. Watch as the receiver's going to run a hook, and the defensive back is going to see it coming. And he goes for broke. It's going to go on 95 the other way. Yep. That was Teddy Lawrence, I think. I can't see his number. But it looked like Lawrence. And it I could have it gone the other way so quickly. But it didn't. And it's an 18 to 14 ball game. And they're going for two. Elton's pass. Good. Jody Kent, 18 to 16. It's a two-point ball game. The man in motion is going to get the ball. The man recovering him is trailing and then runs into some uh, players. Nice design play. Two-point deficit. John Bexford will kick off for Tennessee. The scoring drive reflected there. Helton has hit seven consecutive passes. What is it, Bob? UCLA letting down after an 18-0 lead? Or I is think it Tennessee just catching fire? A little of both. I think UCLA was lulled to sleep by the lack of uh, incentive and knowing that the other team had lost all their quarterbacks. Coverage again is ferocious. Ryan Adams is taken down by Sean Summers in a blistering tackle at the 17-yard line. I think UCLA just said, well, I mean, they, they've got their quarterbacks hurt. They're not, uh, they're not attacking us. You know, I think they kind of maybe just lulled to sleep. And on the other hand, Tennessee says, well, we're at the last quarter. Let's just go out and give it our best shot. If we make a mistake, if we may throw an interception, so what? But let's, let's give it our best shot here at the end. And it's an 18 to 16 ball game with Darren Washington and Sherman Shaw in the backfield now for UCLA. Let's see if they can generate some pressure of their own as Wayne Cook throws. And he had a man wide open and the pass sails incomplete intended for Josh Eby. So look at the scoring by quarters and at the beginning of this quarter when it was uh, 18 to nothing and I said something to the fact that this one may not be over yet. I got a strange look from my partner here and a laugh or something, uh, some weird thing in, out of my earphone from our producer, Bob Goodridge, in the truck. And now I want to know where we are here. They're all jumping on the bandwagon. Oh. <laughs> You're supposed to know this. Yes. Second down and 10. Cook with very good protection. Really? the pass to Kevin Jordan first down UCLA up at the 32 yard line but it is the psyche of a football player like UCLA now says all right they were just offensively they were just playing not to make any mistake now they know that they've got to go out and do something and now they're moving the ball and they get a little more real estate behind them as well Jordan has caught six balls now for 152 yards all of them good for first downs and one touchdown. Little delay. Fairmont Shaw breaks out of the pack. Gets another first down as he reaches the 46-yard line. This evening. 
Time running 5.45 to play in the ball game. First down, Bruins, their own 46. Tennessee shows blitz. Talley tries to come around the corner. Can't get there. Ball thrown to Washington. Darren Washington hooked. And a penalty flag. And the Bruins, I think, may get hit with a penalty here. I, I think E.B. might have pushed somebody in the back. Let's get the word from Jim Springer. Yep. It's against the Bruins. That hurts them. Stops the clock at 531 to play in the ball game, and they had something going. You see that call all the time, Keith. Right here, watch as the, the Bruin in the left is just going to push. Now that if he would have that used to be called clipping but clipping now is only if they hit him below the waist if they push him above the waist or hit him above the waist they call it a a push in the back the play, no it backs him up first down and you know, six. A, a little a small thing that may have contributed to the uh, the, the Bruins' attitude is is J.J. Uh, Stokes going out of the game when it was 18 and up. Uh, yep. Our star going out. Uh, you know, we, the, the, the evening's over with. We've got enough points, so we'll go on to next week. That penalty from the point of the foul makes it a first down and six for UCLA. And Sharmon Shaw immediately pounds over the right side and uh, picks up another first down for the Bruins. Monday night, the premiere of the 25th anniversary season, ABC's Monday night, be playing uh, into January. We're looking forward to that game. I think that has set the tone for a, a real good season. First down, Bruins. Wayne Cook trying to keep the wagon rolling. Shaw again. Pretty good work defensively by Tennessee. They turn him back inside, and he'll get to the 41 for a pickup of about three yards Wayne uh, Cook now with 298 yards of the ball game that'll be a career high for him make it a second down and seven a three -yard game and the clock runs at four thirty five eighteen sixteen UCLA it was eighteen nothing going into the fourth quarter was almost on the verge of becoming a dull game and then lightning struck for Tennessee. Cook, pressure, sack. First sack of the night. Second sack of the night. Thank you, Park. All the way back to the 47 yard line. It was Steve White, number 64. Steve White on the sack for Tennessee. There's White lined up on the outside. He's just going to come uh, free. Everybody is picking up the men inside, and that's just a blown assignment. A five-yard loss on the play. Volunteers have a man shaken on the play, and they will take a timeout here. I'm not sure if he's shaken up or just bone tired, and he's not coming out of the game. So they just wanted time to talk about the defensive philosophy here with four minutes and six seconds to play in uh, the ball game with the Bruins leading by 2, 18 to 16. It'll be third down and 12 when time is back in. College football on ABC Sports being brought to you by Zima, a unique alcohol beverage. Delta Fawcett Company, Delta, the way water is brought to life. Kellogg's with good taste, nutrition, and value. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's. And Hitachi. Hitachi makes over 20,000 innovative products. Tennessee now getting themselves in a position where they have to gamble on defense. And of course, with a seasoned senior quarterback like a cook, they can burn you. Well, on this down, Tennessee just needs to stop them. Third and 12, and that'll force UCLA to punt the ball away. They have not come back with J.J. Stokes. He has not returned. Syracuse has gone ahead of Oklahoma. Oklahoma looked like they had that one uh, put away in the armoire, but it got loose. Kind of tough to win up there in uh, the Carrier Dome. <laughs> it is. It's a whole different environment. Put away where? <laughs> what, what was that? I just I just rolled back through my mind again. Where did you say they're putting them away? 
on the armoire. Armoire over the television. 55,169 at the Rose Bowl watching. Big play here, folks. Cook has the... Just can't get anybody to clear. And rather than risk giving up the ball and giving up a big play, he eats it. And lo and behold, here you've got to punt it. Taylor, the defensive lineman right there, knocked that ball down at the line of scrimmage. He didn't have anybody deep. He wanted to go deep. Now watch, he'll let it go, and uh, he's, he's looking to a short man inside, and uh, never got there. Knocked it right back at him, and yeah. Cook caught it. Yeah, but that's... Uh, you don't want to catch those balls when no. they come back at no, you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Your body will get abused. Yes. Cook, yes. however, will get a reception. Yes. In the record. Yes, he will. But the point was, he was not looking deep because nobody had cleared for him. Tennessee's going to get a chance to get this ball back with uh, over three minutes to play. Shaker's in the punt. Sean Summers should be the deep man for Tennessee, and he Sean is. Sean Summers deep for Tennessee. Darren Summers Schaefer led the SEC, the Southeastern Conference, in punt returns last year. Oklahoma a field goal to go back into the lead by a point. So that's kind of exciting stuff too, isn't it? 18 to 16, a two-point lead for UCLA and a comeback by Tennessee, and the Volunteers are about to get the ball. I think you try to return it. I don't think you try to block it. They're going for the return. That's a good punt. It's over the head. Oh, what a kick! It's out of bounds on the one-yard line. Ooh, Tommy Prothrow would have loved it. <laughs> so with Bob Lehman. One of the strengths of this UCLA team was that both of their kickers, Merton and Shager, the punter, were all Pac-10 players last year. Watch where this ball hits, right at the inside the one-yard line and bounces out of bounds. And the official is right there on it. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, he he earned <laughs> Wait a minute. He earned his keep, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. Darren Shaker. All right, Tennessee out of its end zone. Helton throws. Loops it out and quickly. Mose Phillips is going to get a first down for him. Out nice, around the 12. Nice call by uh, David Cutcliffe. Uh, fake the play, play action. Throw to your fullback who caught a lot of balls last year. Helton is looking very good running this offense. He just took over in the fourth quarter, and uh, there was magic. There have been magic ever since for him. First down out close to the 13-yard line. Give the ball to Stewart. And James Stewart will pick up five, maybe six yards. It's and good they go news. inside three minutes. Good news and bad news Stewart. for Tennessee now. They're down by two. They have an outstanding field goal kicker in Bexford. In fact, he was all Southeastern Conference last year. The bad news is he's missed two field goals here tonight. Yeah, well, I'm to tell you something about him in a minute. Elton is back throwing. Takes off for the marker. Oh, how about that? They've already lost one quarterback tonight, and this one goes airborne and out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. And they'll move the chains again. And here's John Saunders. <laughs> Todd Helton's pass to the sidelines is incomplete intended for Joey Kent. Now, uh, about Bexford. In his career at Tennessee so far, he says he has never been able to kick a field goal to win a game. Today, he he's may never, get his chance. He never had the opportunity. Never had the opportunity yeah. to kick the field goal to win the game. Well, he hopes he gets the opportunity here today. Ball is on the 24, second down and 10. James Stewart. Going defense now, tightening up a bit. Couple of yards on the carry. They're looking at third and long. Clock running, 2.15 to play. Can't call too many running plays. 
in this situation and the quarterback Elton getting some pressure passes intercept Donnie Edwards number 23 right place right time and 155 to play in the game so we told you a few minutes ago this has been a game without turnovers and then suddenly I was just, just going to say that the quarterback needs to know that every play doesn't have to be a positive play just not a negative play no sacks and no interceptions it was just too tall a mountain to climb with not enough experience. So Donnie Edwards makes a huge play and Sherman Shaw and Darren Washington now line up in the UCLA backfield and you know the Bruins now will try to run out that clock. Whoa! What a hit that is from number 64 Steve White. White has proven tonight that he can make you notice him at that defensive end position. And here's Todd Helton, almost certainly the man who will start at quarterback in the next game against the Georgia Bulldogs. on the 35-yard line with a minute and 49 seconds to play in the game. UCLA has been without J.J. Stokes for the fourth quarter. We're told it's a bruised quad. He was, we saw him with an ice bag. It looked like he was more in the knee area. Tennessee lost its starting quarterback, Jerry Colquitt, in the first quarter to an anterior cruciate ligament. Staged a stirring comeback in the fourth quarter after UCLA led by 18 to nothing. And now the interception and now it's a very somber side that Tennessee occupies. Joy and restrained joy, however, on the UCLA side because it was Nervous City over there a few minutes ago. Second down and 13. Cook gives the ball to Darren Washington. And he chucks along to get down to about the 30 and get the clock moving. But Tennessee now will burn up all of their timeouts to keep that clock from getting too far away from it. Keith, it'll be a tough loss if Tennessee goes on and loses this game, but it will not be nearly as tough a loss since the fourth quarter. I mean, they've got a lot of momentum going. They've got yep. some good things done in that fourth quarter, something to build on for next week when they have to go into Georgia. And it looked like Georgia was still leading a while ago in the South Carolina game. And those are the games coming up next Saturday. But in the Pac-10, yep. the alignment and the number of teams and so forth, it's a requisite. And this year it was there. And you got to tip turn. your hat, Keith, to these two teams for getting you together and playing and, and not playing a, uh, uh, a week. One, one double A team. One double A team or, uh, you know, somebody that you know is going to be a, a W, a win. Well, UCLA has never done that. Yep. They generally, there have been some times they played Long Beach State and things like that, but that's to save travel expenses and nothing else. Tennessee UCLA has been a very, very attractive series for a long time, and it is Darren Washington. Touchdown. Game's over. The interception took some of the heart out of Tennessee. You could see that clearly. And all of a sudden, Darren Washington explodes over the right side and goes in. For the touchdown. And the Bruins have won this game. Watch from the left side, and these guards are going to pull, and their man is going to get the ball. Penalty flags as there's contact along the line of scrimmage prior to the snap of the ball. UCLA is backing up, so somebody must have moved. Against the Bruins. 
shouldn't bother Mark. Twenty-four sixteen with a minute and thirty-four seconds to play. The extra point conversion will make it a nine-point ball game. The way this quarter is developed, you want to cover all possibilities. The kick is good. And so it's 25-16 UCLA. UCLA 25. Tennessee 16. Tonight we talked about all the passing, but 198 yards on the ground for UCLA. 295 yards through the air. It's almost 500 yards of total offense. So the volunteers come in loaded with optimism. The fate dealt them a bad hand at the very outset of this ball game. UCLA, on the other hand, was not sure of exactly what they had, but it seems that they've got enough to build a season on. Georgia wins over South Carolina 24-21. That's the next opponent for the Volunteers. UCLA will have SMU, and then a considerable test as they go to Nebraska. Yes, considerable. Billy Williams is back on the field as a kick return man. Sore leg and all. He's a gamer. It's Williams. Out to the 24 yard line. Billy Williams on the return. All right. Here's Helton. Randy Sanders sends him in with a slap on the back and the play. Williams, after that run, dreadfully sore leg, I'm sure, has to be helped off the field. Aaron Hayden, single back. UCLA in a true, pure prevent. I mean, eight guys are dropping back. <laughs> Penalty flag thrown about the line of scrimmage here. Let's see what that's about. Penalty marker on the field. There's a Tennessee man, Kendrick Jones, who's rolling around. He's shaken up, too. Good man. Possibly uh, uh, Kendrick Jones. They're looking at his knee. He's a wide receiver. Uh, Billy Williams, a wide receiver. Hey, 15 he mentioned earlier they lost their the two starting wide receivers from last year. First down, Tennessee. Kendrick is in some pain. This has not been a very good trip for the Volunteers. Nope. They have a core of freshman wide receivers. They, they may have to be used some of them. The field field they plan to use them all, but they're listed on the roster. It will be a first down for the Volunteers. Your time remaining is a minute and 25 seconds, and the ball sits up on the 39-yard line. God help him. He's past the line of scrimmage now and uh, tiptoes out at the 42. And that stops your clock at 119. And it seems like an eternity, probably, for the UCLA faithful. But they do have now a nine point cushion thanks to that touchdown bolt up the middle by Darren Washington. Second down and seven. Elton's pass is completed. Completed up at the 45-yard line of UCLA, make it the 44. So he has really been a dramatic figure on the field in this fourth quarter. Darren Washington's 30-yard touchdown run that really sealed it for the Bruins. Well, and the interception that helped. And the interception. You know, you never knew what that drive uh, would have turned out to be. Elton ducks away from the pressure, throws, and it is incomplete. Helton has just had not had the experience 
he hasn't made the mistakes to learn from. He has made mistakes in this game that he's going to learn from, but unfortunately, the game was on the line when he's learning those mistakes. It doesn't get any better. The two players behind him are true freshmen, and they've just got their first action of big-time college football here this evening. Helton is 12 out of 26 for 132 yards. Peyton Manning is in for a series. And this is Aaron Hayden. And he pounds along down Aaron to the 30-yard line. Tennessee has no more timeouts remaining. They burned him up. So Good right news. now, the pecking order would see... I don't know who Eddie would be. Would it be uh, Helton? Uh, uh, Stewart was terrific when he came in. So. I think I think you got to go with Helton and then Stewart. Stewart yep. seemed to, to play well some, but he just... He just didn't know enough plays. Who's that? A 14-yard gain on the carry by who it is. Aaron Hayden. A lot of Tennessee people have been hurt in this ball game, but this big fellow is going to get up, all right? It's number 74. It's Jeff Smith. Jeff has been kind of gimpy now. This for a large part of this second half, he came out early on in the fourth quarter and didn't seem to be whole. He's the right Jeff guard. So apparently he's, he's scuffling with some kind of an injury himself. Three hundred and ten pounder, you you could miss him. <laughs> the guy that replaces him in Trey Peterson, Trey is a mere two seventy. Mm -hmm. Fifty two seconds now. Ball just short of the thirty. Elton back. Goes to the sidelines and it is short of the first down. Caught by Mose Phillips. And he's ridden well out of bounds. It'll be second down. Pick up on about seven yards on the play. Put the ball on the 25 yard line. Tennessee going without a huddle. Elton dropping back and having a look. Swings it out. He got one on one out here. And the deep back Aaron Hayden trying to high step it to the sidelines and get a first down. He didn't get the first down, but he did stop the clock. The clock continues to run, too. That's what uh, all the Tennessee fans are complaining about. Yeah, they owe him about uh, six seconds. Yes, of it. they do. The clock continued to run, and, and Fulmer knows about it, too. There's about five or six, seven seconds that need to go back on that clock after he ran out of bounds. I'll tell you what. I like Phil Fulmer. I tell you, what, he looks to me like he's got a pretty good ship flying through the waves to me because he, he's in control of it. Nobody knows. Is any question about who the boss is? And yet he seems very even-handed. What's he got? What's he got going through well, the ship whatever, going through know, the waves? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All on the 25. Third down. <laughs> ship going through the waves? Well, that's because you're a landlubber. You don't understand those things. Helton throws quickly. Pass is complete. Man is down around the 17. It is good for a first down. There's a penalty flag. The clock is stopped again. You've got 19 seconds now. Big man. Full start. Whoops. Offense. There's still 22 seconds. 22 seconds instead of 19. So that'll back them up some more. And TD is wearing out that uh, jug of ice. A five-yard penalty against Tennessee. Good job, good job. Third and nine. Elton steps up and lets it go, and there's a penalty flag. And looks like you've got an interference down here in the corner because the side judge that's threw it. It's a heck of a catch. Joey Kent was down there under the ball. Joey Kent on the reception. And he caught the ball. Now the question is, was he in? Looked like he was in. He's about the inside the one yard line yeah. if the uh, foul is not against Tennessee. Yeah. It's not against Defense Tennessee. Penalty is declined. It is first and goal, Tennessee. It's a great catch here. Watch this as he lays out. Tennessee. Just short. Kent's dropped some, but he's made some great catches and onside James kick Stewart and look out. Dives in for the touchdown. So Tennessee won't quit. Bubba's right. As Stewart goes over the top. Somebody uh, operating the 
the scoreboard is messing with these Tennessee fans. They just gave UCLA 31 points. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> First, they, they were keeping the clock running, and then they gave them some more points for UCLA. 25-22 ball okay. game now. And they will go for the single point. Bexport will kick it to make it a two-point ball game with 10 seconds to play. You know the onside kick is coming. The kick is good. So it is 25. 23. You get an onside kick, you get the ball, maybe one quick play out of bounds, and you hope for a long uh, field goal by Bexford. If you're wearing orange and white. <laughs> <laughs> this has been some quarter. This is what they call uh, paint swapping. Right, Keith? Yep. The big uglies that work right there, boy. Stewart for the big jump. And it's 25-23. Now, here's where UCLA sends out all of the DBs, all the defensive backs, receivers. Whoever can catch the ball the best that will be on the field. It's the good hands the people right here. This is their team. 76 yards. The time Running the backs. And uh, conversely, on the other side, uh, Tennessee, both teams work on this all the time. Uh, this is called the onside kickoff team for Tennessee and the onside kickoff return team for UCLA. Now the volunteers cannot touch the ball for 10 yards. UCLA on the other hand John can go Pittsburgh catch it anywhere. For Tennessee. They can catch it a yard off the foot of the kicker and the reason, they can get to it. The reason he's putting it that way is because they're not making any bones about it. They're Ladies saying we're going to try an onside kick. But you have to have at least four men on either side of the kicker. That's a new rule last year. You have to have four men on either side. You can't put them all over there at the top of the screen. So there's five on this side and six on the other side, and there it goes, and they don't get him out. Woo! Goes straight to Kevin Jordan, and he simply goes to his knees and covers it, and it belongs to UCLA. So Tennessee stages a huge comeback in the fourth quarter. The Bruins rally and they score 10 while the Volunteers count 23. And it's been a while since Terry Donahue has allowed himself any semblance of a grin. But there was one there. When you score 23 points from being down 18 to nothing, you can go home with some momentum. And a Especially, especially when you have lost your quarterback. Exactly right, Keith. Uh, going into the season, all the attention was to Jerry Colquitt. Uh, Fulmer had told him that I want you to be the surprise player in the Southeastern Conference this year. And on the first series, Colquitt goes out with a season-ending injury, and the quarterback position is up for grabs. But Tennessee came back. And the game now will tick away and go into the history books as UCLA defeats Tennessee 25 to 23. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Todd Helton for Tennessee, Kevin Jordan for UCLA, Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and assist those in financial need. Not a bad beginning for a year of college football. We hope you enjoyed it. Good night. First game of the season, and the Vol fans had their, they had their hopes riding high on starter Jerry Colquitt. You saw there, we all watched it on TV. Colquitt slips, the Bruin tumbles on top of him. Word of the locker room is that Colquitt will be out the rest of the season. Now all the attention turns on players we thought would be on the bench. Backup quarterbacks, and they wowed us. Came out and surprised many of us with an exciting ending to that game. Thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Nunley. The Vols make a big comeback despite the bad luck early on. In the heart of all the action right now at the Rose Bowl is our own Jim Wogan. And Jim was impressive toward the end there. Still didn't win, though. Well, I'm not going to try and cover up for this uh, Tennessee loss or try to sugarcoat this thing at all, but this was an admirable effort by a Tennessee football team that really was trying to find itself throughout this football game. They lost their starting quarterback on the first series of plays. Colquitt goes out. He's out indefinitely now with a torn anterior cruciate ligament. His season seriously is in doubt the rest of the way. And for most of the game, Tennessee tried to find a quarterback that could fill in. Todd Helton was in there. Peyton Manning was in there. 
and Brandon Stewart was in there. Finally, they settle on Todd Helton. And what an admirable attempt to bring this football team back. They were down 18 to nothing in the fourth quarter. They make it an 18-16 football game. Then uh, the interception, of course, hurts them late in the game. UCLA scores, Tennessee scores again, and we wind up with a two-point football game when all is said and done. And for a team that really was searching drastically through most of this football game, Tennessee did an admirable job here tonight. Now, nobody's going to not want to talk too much about those missed field goals. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll come up in, in a lot of post-game analysis, but uh, Bexford still does an admirable job. He missed a 48-yarder. Borderline range for him. He's capable of kicking longer, but... Uh, the, uh, the shorter one, the 33-yarder, no doubt folks will look back at that, and if he makes that one, Tennessee wins this football game and comes out of Pasadena with their second straight win out here at the Rose Bowl. We'll have more, of course, coming up later in Big Orange Saturday night. We'll try to get some post-game reaction. Right now, the, uh, the locker room is closed to the media. The balls are in there just moments ago walking off the field, Russ, and uh, we'll try to get some post-game comments from them coming up later in Big Orange Saturday night. Yeah, we got to look forward with this, but also got to remember, Colquitt, after four years like this, this, this is rough. That's tough for Jerry. I mean, he, he has been geared up for this this whole season, his entire career, really. And to see something like this happen, not just in the game, but on the first series of plays. And he was really moving this, this uh, offense really well in this game. Things were looking good for Tennessee early. He goes out of the game, and then it, it gets really kind of, kind of hectic after that, just trying to find somebody who can settle in there and direct this offense. So your heart goes out to a kid like Jerry Colquitt, who's been banking on this season for a long time. And... And right now, Tennessee just tries to regroup a little bit, and it looks like Todd Helton going in against Georgia next week. Sure, and we will be looking forward to that. We'll look forward to your live reports coming up on Big Orange Saturday, too. Thanks, we'll Jim Wogan, reporting live in Pasadena. Well, Jim's with the fans out in Pasadena, but most of us watch the game back at home here on TV. Some watching it with a lot of team spirit. This party with some friends invited over to a house out in West Knox County. Some more folks gather at local restaurants, all talking about the QBs. He was in for four years, learning the system, being a backup. I feel really bad for him. I'm real confident in our backup. Todd Helton is a very good quarterback, and we got the two freshmen on the bench, so I'm not worried about the quarterback position. He's got to sit back there. They've got to allow him the time to develop and uh, feel like he can produce, you know, step forward. So uh, when, when he starts doing that, I think they've got just as good a quarterback. Many of the fans are keeping in mind now that the UCLA game doesn't count in the SEC race. The Amazing comeback. Back. Yeah. Down 18 to nothing and getting a chance to actually come back and, and maybe have a shot at winning this thing. So, you know, on one side, it was kind of bad luck for the balls, but you try to go on and uh, hopefully there's some bright spots maybe sure. ahead for the ball. A so uh, we'll examine all that, show you highlights, go back to the <laughs> Welcome to another season of Big Orange Saturday Night. We'll join you every Saturday night after the Vols games here at about 11.15. It would have been 11.15 tonight if the uh, game hadn't run over, but we'll be here every Saturday with the most comprehensive report on the Vols and on college football. The hopes of a very good season dashed in a matter of seconds tonight and early in the first quarter. For five years, Jerry Colquitt had waited for this chance, and now his season, maybe his career is over. Happening on this play, Jerry running the option left, Keeping watch the left leg there, he plants it and slides, and he gets nailed too. Now the stress tearing in the anterior cruciate ligament. It's the same injury that happened to Chuck Webb. Jerry knows it right away when he gets up. Here it is again, Jerry's lower leg nearly flat on the ground right here, and then takes a pretty good lick. He returned to the sidelines later on crutches, and it's believed that his season is over. Let's go live now to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, Pasadena, where Jim Wogan is right there with more on Jerry Colquitt. What have you heard so far after the game, Jim? Well, right now, the, uh, the official word, Scott, is that he's out indefinitely, a torn anterior cruciate ligament. Nobody is making any predictions for the rest of this season. And right now, the quarterbacking situation, officially, if you can believe this, is still up in the air. But uh, all bets right now are on Todd Helton, that, uh, the way he directed this team 
uh, in the second half of the football game and brought them back from an 18-0 deficit and almost won this game. Helton is the number one guy right now going in against Georgia next week. Now, we had a chance a few moments ago to talk to a couple of the guys. We don't have anything on tape just yet. The locker room just opened up. We're making an effort to get one of the players out here live or perhaps on tape. But in talking to a Peyton Manning earlier, he said he can't believe what's happened to a Jerry Colquitt and the first series of plays in this football game. It's a... Uh, it's been a strange it was a strange game no doubt about that Colquitt goes out with the injury his season looks to be over we uh, we played quarterback shuffle throughout this football game and we even had a uh, if you can believe this you may not have seen this on the network telecast but we had a streaker run from one end zone to the other and I bet he was out on that football field for a good minute before he was finally toweled and apprehended that guy needed a clothing change and uh, Tennessee went with a quarterback change through most of this game until they finally settled on Todd Hilton. So a strange game nonetheless in Tennessee. I think I'll be proud coming out of here with the, uh, with the, uh, the narrow loss, Scott. A two-point loss heading into that Georgia game next week. Yeah, there's no question. This week is going to be big for the Vols. Every day of practice is going to be very important for these guys. Todd Hilton's the number one guy. I don't care what anyone's saying tonight. I mean, that's, that's obvious at this point that he's the guy to direct this Tennessee offense from here on in. And honestly, I think Jerry Colquitt's season, even though they're not saying officially, Jerry's season is over. I'm not sure if he can get a medical hardship at this point or what his status is with that. We're going to check on that and try to update you later on on Big Orange Saturday night. Okay. Jim, thanks a lot. We'll be checking back here in just yep. a couple of minutes. Jim's going to have some interviews for you, so don't go away. But nothing else to do right now except to put this behind you and hope to go on. The Vols having to find a new quarterback. Todd Helton waiting to go in here early in the game. It happened in the first quarter when he had to take over for Jerry Colquitt. His first pass is completed to Billy Williams. He picks up a big chunk here, but it was called back because of a penalty. UCLA going long on the balls. Wayne Cook for Kevin Jordan. The Bruins with the touchdown. The point after no good. 6-0 UCLA. True freshman Peyton Manning getting his turn. He hands off to James Stewart. Now, there's only so much these freshmen can do. They've only had about three weeks of practice, so it's going to take them some time. The Bruins get two field goals from Bjorn Merton, their All-America kicker, and they take the lead in 12-0 at the half. Brandon Stewart, true freshman, coming in the same class as Peyton Manning, getting his turn in the second half. It's Kendrick Jones right there. Looked pretty good in this game. He might step forward this week. From there, the balls go on the reverse in the fourth quarter. Nilo Silva takes it, and he runs it inside the five-yard line, and the balls finally get their first touchdown of the game. Mose Phillips goes over the top. Todd Helton telling the guys, hey, we're going for two now. We're going for two. Helton throws it, has Billy Williams who fights his way in, and the balls were down only 18 to eight. Here's Helton again. He finds freshman Courtney Epps. Watch Epps fight to get in the end zone, and Helton says, yes. They go for two again. Helton has Joey Kent. They're down only 18 to 16. Helton looked very good in that fourth period. Now UCLA does score a touchdown late after a ball turnover. Darren Washington rips it up the middle, and the Bruins are up 25-16, but it's not over. The Vols are still in it. Look at Helton for Joey Kent, who makes just a fantastic grab. He is down on the one-yard line. Then Stewart over the top, 25-23. The Vols down by two. They go for the onside kick, and it just doesn't bounce their way. So UCLA hangs on. 25 to 23, but what a heck of a finish there for the Vols to come back to score 23 points in that fourth quarter. We're just getting started here. We'll go back live to the Rose Bowl Pasadena, and we'll see how the Vols' next opponent did today. It's Georgia next. The Bulldogs in action this evening down in Columbia, South Carolina. We'll have a test there for us, Jim. Tell you what, Scott, we got a guy who had some tough duty tonight, Ronald Davis, defensive back, uh, J.J. Stokes. I mean, you were covering that guy pretty well tonight. Admirable effort out there. Yeah, he was a great, great receiver, but, you know, we came out and had a good game plan, and we stuck to it, and everything worked out for the best. Disappointing loss, no doubt. The way you guys come back in the fourth quarter, though, give you a little bit of inspiration going in against Georgia next week? Yeah, you know, we're just going to have to get back focused and get our mind back on the things we have to do as far as, you know, getting, getting the right reads and getting the proper techniques and uh, doing everything we need to do to come out victorious next week. What's the word on Jerry? Have you heard? I mean, out for the season, obviously. Yeah, well, right now, you know, he has a torn ACL, and hopefully, you know, after they do test on him, he'll, you know, you know, hopefully it'll be negative, you know, and if it comes back, you know, positive, then we're just going to have to, you know, move on and, you know, get, get those young guys ready to come out next week. Now, all the uh, quarterbacks in there are, are kind of hedging on who's going to quarterback this team next week, but uh, I'll give you one guess. Who's going to be the guy to run the offense next week down there in Georgia? 
Well, I'm thinking about Todd Helton. You know, he did a great job tonight, and hopefully, you know, he'll come out and show the same leadership he did next week. The way you guys came back in the fourth quarter, you're down 18 nothing. You finally get some offense going. I mean, that in itself has to be uh, make you guys immensely proud. You want to come out of here with a win, but you play a tough football team tonight. You don't play a UTC, uh, a team that Alabama played. You play a tough opponent tonight. You play them well on the home field over here in Pasadena, and, and you come out of here holding your heads up high. Yeah, we, you know, we definitely have to come out here holding our heads up high. We can't look at this. You know, we can't look back on this next week and be having a head down, you know, during the week. We just got to come out and stay focused and do our jobs and practice, and hopefully everything will work out for the best next week. Hey, uh, real quickly, the, the streaker. I mean, were you, were you looking, or what was the reaction on the sideline when this guy sprints from one end zone to the other? And he really, after that point, you guys, you know, you guys picked it up after that. What was the deal there? I guess the streaker kind of fired <laughs> us up. You know, I guess it was supposed to fire them up, but it's fired us up. But... You know, hopefully I get some help for this guy. It, it was a strange game, no doubt about that, from that standpoint. Tough duty next week. I mean, you got Stokes tonight and, and Cook throwing passes to him. You got Zyre next week. It, it doesn't get any easier, does it? No, it doesn't get any, any easier, you know, for these first three games. I'm just going to come out and stay focused. And if we do that, I think we'll come out victorious next week. All right, Ron. Ron Davis, the uh, Vol defensive back. Good game tonight. Wish you would have gotten the win, but good luck next week Thanks against Georgia. Me. All right, Ron Davis, uh, a guy who... Uh, Played real well tonight against J.J. Stokes. You know, the thing about Stokes, Scott, is that he catches the ball, and he is so much after he catches the football. And the Vols really defensively, I think, played a super game tonight. Oh, there's no question about it. You know, they, when, when they got down, UCLA got down there around the 20-yard line. It looked like the defense really stepped up and held them out of the end zone. They did. And the receiver, you know, there were a couple of big plays. Jordan had the big play for a touchdown. He had another big play later in the game. But Stokes, he, he, he got his catches, but he didn't get those, those catches that really will, you know, stick a knife in you during the game. He didn't get that catch and turn it into an 80-yard touchdown run. And they really clamped down on this guy. It was uh, maybe not a, as high a scoring game as I thought it was going to be, but uh, I think Phillips got to be pretty pleased with the way the defense played tonight. Yeah, I think so too. Something to build on for next program. will want to come back if the NCAA grants it. And I'd say under the circumstances going down on the first series of plays in the first game of the season, that that's what's going to happen down the road. The two field goals missed hurt real bad tonight. But, uh, you know, all in all, it was a good football game. 25-23, the final score. The Vols come up on the short end. Again, they're playing a tough team out here. They're not playing a weak team, so they're, they're, they're building for later in the season. A two-point loss is tough to take, but, hey, we did it on the road, and it happened against a, a top-20 opponent. Now, the big story, as Scott alluded to, is Jerry Colquitt and his injury situation. Hurt early in the game. Looks like he's out for the season. Nothing official yet, but he's out indefinitely at this point with a torn anterior cruciate ligament. After the game, we spoke to Peyton Manning, who got in tonight's game, about the situation, and here's what he had to say. And uh, nobody deserves uh, success more than he does, and uh, for that to happen, um, you know, my heart's with his family, and uh, he's going to come through it because he's so strong, but uh, you know, my prayers with Jerry, and uh, hopefully um, he'll be all right. Hey, was there a rhyme or reason as to when you guys would go in and come out and somebody else would go in? Did they, they explain that to you at all? Well, just uh, not before the game. They told me uh, just, you know, once um, you know, once Todd went in, Coach Fuller pulled Brandon and I aside and said, both of y'all are going to play. So he said, be ready. And uh, just after that second or third series, Todd said, you know, uh, Coach Sanders said, Peyton, you're going in. And Coach Cuckle said, you know, just you know, go ahead and just play, play a little football. And uh, second half came, um, you know, at halftime, they said Brandon would be the next guy to go in. And, uh, and then Todd got on a little roll there. Uh, they told me I was going to play in the second half, but Todd got on a little roll and they stayed with him. And that's no problem with me. But uh, next week with Georgia, I'll be ready to go in. And uh, I know I'll get in there. You guys feel like you're auditioning out there? Yeah, he will be ready to go in. And so will Brandon Stewart, both saying they haven't heard officially, but they expect to get in the game. And, and obviously, Todd Helton, the number one guy going in next week against Georgia. Big game down there in Athens. The Vols are 0-1 right now to start off the season. But you go back, back to the late 60s. Somebody called me earlier this week at the station and said, hey, don't forget, Tennessee went out there to UCLA, lost the first game of the season to UCLA, and wound up in the Orange Bowl and ranked number two in the country going into that game. So if you're going to lose, lose early, lose to a good team, and try to regroup and, and go on from there. So we, uh, we start again next week against Georgia. Scott, that's it from uh, Pasadena. I got three of us here anxious to get back to the, uh, the hills of Tennessee. We're looking forward to coming back home. Yeah, well, you guys have a safe trip. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. A lot of work ahead for the Vols, and we'll be uh, having all the reports for you coming up this week on practice and update you on the quarterback situation and on the status of Jerry Colquitt. Now, that does it for our first edition. When you can't watch WATE TV 6, listen. Tune to 87.7 FM for a continuous simulcast of East Tennessee's 24-hour news source.